Good. Live at five. Okay. I would uh, like to start that uh, we acknowledge we acknowledge that the land in which we gather is the on tra is the traditional unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq First Nation. Call to order. Uh, just under call to order, I was speaking to Frank Quinn, who is a Parks Recreation Leisure Manager, about April 8th, which is the Eclipse 2024. And hopefully we will have something available for the view in public, which we encourage people not to go out and watch the Eclipse without the proper eyewear. Um, but hopefully we'll have something announced in the next couple of days. And declarations of conflict of interest. Seeing none. So on the agenda, we have 4A, uh, 4B, and C, operational budget. We don't have anyone phoning in, so I need... S oh, Chief Engineer Scott Adams uh, calling in. You there, Chief Engineer? Mr. Adams? Yep, just... So I need someone to move the resolution, moved by Councillor Ramsey, second by Councillor Beck. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Are you online there now, uh, Mr. Adams? He should be. I am here. Okay. Okay. So Councillor McCabe is not here tonight, so she will not be calling in. We will be doing the vote via electronic e-vote. So I am going to ask uh, 4A, Protective Emergency Services Resolution Attached, request to enter in development encroachment agreements for outdoor patios and city right-of-ways. Councilor Ramsey, did you have anything to say about it? For that, uh, no, it's all, it's all straightforward right there. Every year th we have these same request come through and we're hoping in the future that it can happen every two to three years so we're not back looking at the same properties every year and uh, i think the bylaw officer already addressed some of the issues we had last year <coughs> with the angler parking and things along that line so i think we're good to go on that your worship thank you cao eleanor can you read the resolution please thank you Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor Ramsey, seconded by Deputy Mary Ankoff. Be it resolved that the requests to enter into a development encroachment agreements for outdoor patios be located at the following locations in Charlottetown. Um, be approved at the end, to the end of the 2026 season, subject to annual permit applications and fees. And then the mayor and CAO are hereby authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements to implement this resolution. Slaymaker and Nichols Gastro House in the two parallel parking spaces on Fitzroy Street in front of 82 Fitzroy Street, PID 344135. Brits Fish and Chips in the three perpendicular parking spaces on Great George Street in front of 141 Great George Street, PID 342360. Churchill Arms Pub and Restaurant in the three perpendicular parking spaces in front of 75 Queen Street, PID 338004. Casamia Restaurant in the two perpendicular parking spaces in front of 131 Queen Street, PID 340232. Merchant Man Pub in the three perpendicular parking spaces on Queen Street in front of 23 Queen Street, PID 335091. Piatto Pizzeria in the two parallel parking spaces on King Street adjacent to 45 Queen Street, PID 335653, Sims Corner Steakhouse in the two perpendicular parking spaces on Queen Street and two parallel parking spaces on Sydney Street located at 86 Queen Street, PID 338145, Hopyard Beer Bar in the three perpendicular parking spaces on Kent Street in front of 151 Kent Street, PID 344200, Abioco Italian in the three perpendicular parking spaces on Kent Street in front of 150 Kent Street, PID 342709. 
the Kettle Black in the two perpendicular parking spaces on Queen Street in front of 45 Queen Street, PID 335653. Upstreet Craft Beer Corner in the three, or three perpendicular parking spaces on Great George Street in front of 156 Great George Street. Uh, PID 344382, the Gahan House in the two parallel parking spaces on Sydney Street in front of 126 Sydney Street, PID 338137. Pharmacy and Fermentary in the two perpendicular parking spaces on Great George Street in front of 152 Great George Street, PID 342717. Gaia's Urban Eatery in the two per perpendicular parking spaces on Queen Street in front of 62 Queen Street, PID 336990. Sea Rocket Oyster House in the three perpendicular parking spaces on Queen Street in front of 110 Queen Street, PID 339176. And the Pony Boat in front of the, uh, in the three perpendicular parking spaces on Kent Street in front of 157 Kent Street, PID 344226. Thank you very much there, CAO Honor Mohammed. That's 16 they read off there. That's a record. Councilor Twill. I have a question on the, on the cost per parking space. So it says here in the report, $600 per parking space, encroachment fee $77.25, plus an administrative fee of $100. Has that been the same price over the last number of years? Has there been an increase? Uh, or is it pretty much status quo? Council Ramsey. Thank you for your question, Councillor Tweel. I believe it's been like that for a few years now. Maybe the police chief, if it's, I don't think the price went up to the chief or, or to stay status quo. Could you answer that? Do you chief? mind if I pass it on? Yeah. Oh, no, no. You can defer to the chief. Just speaking to the mic there, chief. Thank you kindly. <clears throat> Uh, Your Worship, uh, Councillor Tweel, Chair, um, uh, there has been no increases in the last few years other than the standardizing of the COVID uh, patios that uh, were brought up to, and on the level playing field of fees. Um, so that's that's been the only increase. Councillor Tweel, oh, sorry, go ahead, Chief. Are you done there? Yeah, Councillor Tweel, second question. So again, there's been no increase, like the $100 administration fee. That's not an increase, is it? Chief? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Yeah. My second question is, I'm just looking at the report. This was all vented through the Protective Services Committee, correct? How come I don't see, if I look at the committee report, why don't I see a, a committee recommendation that's just signed off by the CAO, the Chief of Police, but there's no recommendation from the committee. Why is that? Councilor Ramsey? Uh, because it just went through every year, as we always did, your worship with the same ones, and uh, we're just basically renewing the same patios, as far as I'm concerned. Chief, uh, I don't know if you're going to uh, add just, to that. Or? Can I just ask the deputy? She sits on that same committee, too. Sure. Deputy? Um, yeah, thanks. I think that's just a clerical error because um, the staff did come with a recommendation and committee supported staff's recommendation to move this on to council. So I think that was just something that was missed in, in clerically in the typo because we did, we this was recommended there was a to vote. staff yeah. and we voted. Did you vote? Yep. Yeah, because I yep. made reference back in 2004, the first patio that we went with, went to uh, the outdoor patio with St. James' Gate. Council, you spoke twice. We're, no, no. We're, it's a clerical error. Uh, so it's clerical? Yeah. Chief, can you address that, please? I can address that. Who's addressing? CAO? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, through your worship to Councillor Tweel. So the reports were updated, I'm going to say, about mid-year to fall last year. And how the reports, instead of writing multiple reports, each report has a staff recommendation. That staff recommendation is considered by the committee, and if the committee swarts that recommendation, then they, they pass a resolution at committee, and it comes forward to council. The same recommendation that's there. The space at the bottom of the, the report is if there's a committee recommendation that's differing from staff. 
So say the committee didn't agree with what staff was putting forward, then we update that little box at the bottom of the report to say what the committee recommendation was. So when the report comes to council, it shows what staff recommendation was, what the committee recommendation was, and then council has all the information they need to make that decision. Okay, Councilor Twill, just one sec. On page five digital, on your digital copy, committee recommendation in brackets, if differing from staff. We didn't differ from staff. It was unanimous. I know, but that, but we have the deputy, yay, uh, the chair, yay, Beck, yay, myself, yay, unanimous. So the split vote, then it'd be illustrated in there. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't CAO, is that yeah. correct? Um, if it was a... If it was a split vote. Couldn't be a split was, vote. There if four, was, like if it was a lost... <laughs> so your, your report is to go along with your minutes. So right. that would tell you the whole story of what happened at the committee. But um, if it was a majority vote at the committee that there was something different than what staff was recommending, then that would be included in there. Okay. Resolution's on the floor there, Councilor Twill. It's, it's, it's unanimous from the committee. Okay. I'm going to ask if you can, I'm just going to put up the, okay. Questions called, so ready to vote? You can vote. Oh, sorry. Cast your vote. All in? All in. Nine zero. And resume. Okay, hold on. Just trying to shut this. Close. There's a result. Thank you. Okay, do we have, is that the only resolution from, okay, Protective Emergency Service. Okay. 4B, there are five planning and heritage resolutions. Uh, Deputy, do you want to just bring them up or just read them off right away? Okay. Could you read the first one there? CAO Muhammad. Moved by Deputy Mary Ankoff, seconded by Councillor Beck. Be it resolved that Council approve the, the request for major variance of 22 Stewart Street, PID 1133016, to reduce the uh, required minimum lot frontage for a semi-detached dwelling on the subject property from 22 meters, 72.2 feet, to the current frontage of the lot of 11.53 meters, 37.84 feet, and to reduce the required minimum lot area from semi-detached dwelling of 696 square meters, 7,491.4 square feet, to the current area of the lot of 321.1 square meters, 3,456.3 square feet, and reduce the required minimum rear yard setback from a semi-detached dwelling from 7.5 meters, 24.6 feet, to 5.95 meters, 19.52 uh, feet. Hey, Councilor Tweel. Notice in the report there was discussions about a drainage plan. Uh, staff doesn't anticipate any, any challenges with uh, any type of uh, water drainage. The question I have is the Water drainage, is that not part of the prerequisite for the application and approval once council approves it? Will that be uh, a requirement that there is, in fact, um, a bona fide uh, drainage plan before the permit can be issued? Deputy, do you want to answer that, please? Could you just stand up? Thank you. So, um, once, once this is either approved or not approved, then, then the planning staff will require the appropriate documentation to accompany this. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. So the drainage plan will come if we approve this, but they don't need to provide a drainage plan until they get it approved. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 So in, or, in order to get the permit? Then you have to check to, off the boxes. Have to check yeah. off the box. You don't get a drainage plan until you get the approval. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Councilor Drawn. 
Thank you. Um, I, I believe you have to have a drainage plan when you ask for a building permit, do you not? Yeah. So this is kind of, you know, you, you have to have a drainage plan when you're asking for it. But in, this, this is just the result, uh, this is to provide the, uh, okay. the, the, the parameters for the permit. When the homeowner, correct me if I'm wrong, when the homeowner goes down to the uh, 70 Kent to get a permit, he or she will have to show a drainage. David, could you just list off what would be required under that permit? Because this is going to follow up in another application. I'm glad that you bring it up there, Councilor Dron. Thank did you want to just, did you want to ask another question? Yes, I do. Okay, so, we'll get. So now we have here, it's, it's 72 feet is the lot's current frontage. So if we're allowing this, it's dropping down to, what is it, 37? 37. So. So I'm just saying this is this is for a duplex lot. It's it's an empty lot, and I understand we're we're looking for more housing, which is which is great. So is there a precedent once you once you allow this? You know, you're supposed to have I think 59 or 60 frontage. So we're we're dropping this to 37 now. So is is this setting a precedent that if I buy a lot, an empty lot, I can turn around and drop it down to 37 feet frontage, and, but with a condition that I'd have to come to council uh, for that, right? So, so it's just one of those things. This, this is great, it's gonna go an infill a lot, but if I buy a lot, can I, can I knock it down to 37 feet frontage and apply for that? Now, Council Dron, did you wanna add something else to that? I know you're up because you're gonna no, that's good. good so I, I, I'm going to get the deputy to answer, and then she wants to defer to David Gundrum. Uh, great. Yeah, thank you for that <coughs> question, Councillor Duran. And a similar type of question was asked at planning board, and the way that it was answered to us by our manager is that um, it does not set a precedent. However, um, the way they explained it is every time a major variance application is submitted, each one has to be looked at um, one by one. So that just because one gets approved doesn't mean that automatically if you buy a lot and you want to have this major variance that it would be a no-brainer. Each, each application is evaluated on its own merit. And so if there's anything else, David, you wanted to add to that, but I'm pretty sure that's the way you answer that question to us at Planning Board. Mr. Uh, Gundrum. Yeah, through the chair, just to echo what the Deputy Mayor, uh, Chair of Planning Board said, that's absolutely correct. When we evaluate Planning Act applications, we don't look at, um, take a common law perspective or look at precedent from past applications. We look at each application on its own merit. relatively in isolation on its own merits. So we don't look to past decisions to inform future decisions. And David, could you answer the question about uh, the drainage plan and other requirements before getting a permit? Uh, yeah, through, through the chair to comment on that. Um, the drainage plan, we require a drainage plan up front with the building permit submission. And then prior to occupancy being issued, we do also require a final grading and drainage plan and both would have to be stamped by a professional engineer uh, to demonstrate no offsite impacts as a result of development. Do you want to follow up? Sure, sure. It, it just, I, I, I'm wondering how this is here now without a building application. Um, so you're just asking for a variance. That's before the building permit application came in. So, so no one has asked for a building permit as, as of yet. This is just a, you ask for a variance and away you go. Perfect, thank you. Did you want to answer that? You're all right. Okay. Councilor Twill. Uh, besides the uh, concern about the drainage plan, was there any other issues that were associated with this application? Was the drainage plan or, or the challenge of water drainage, was that the only issue that was identified uh, in any of the nearby constituents? Can answer Deputy? that. So you'd see in your package on page 17. 70 in the digital form? Yeah, in yes, the digital just one form. Second. I'll just and it, it, out. it outlines the positives, the neutrals, and the shortcomings. Oh, and okay. so they're all listed there. Yeah. And just quickly looking here, the shortcomings would be the lot frontage does not 
uh, meet the required setback. The lot area does not meet the required setbacks and the rear setbacks does not meet the required setbacks. But I'm pretty sure there was just one letter of support on this application. Is that right, David, or were there any? Uh, Mr. Gundrum. Through the Chair, Deputy Mayor, I believe that's correct. I don't have the package in front of me, but um, there was a limited response to this application. Yeah, no, it's an infill development. It's, it's great. So, no, you, you, you get your two questions. We, yeah, no, he stood up. You know, he stood up and asked, asked two in his one question. That's what you do. Yeah. Okay, Councillor Beck. Uh, from what I recall, I think the, the one concern that came in in the letter was about the water drainage. And I think that's been, the water drainage was mentioned as a potential issue. I think it might have been relative to the fact that there had been water issues on Passmore Street in that area before, so maybe that's where it came from. But I don't, I don't recall any other dissenting arguments for uh, the project other than that. Thanks. Okay. Question? Okay. Questions call. Okay. Just one second. Let me get this here. Please cast your vote. Missing one vote. Councilor McClair? Yeah. Yay or nay? Okay. Just take that as 9-0. Okay. Okay. Do you want to go to the next one, please? Moved by Deputy Mary Yankoff, seconded by Councillor Beck. Be it resolved that Council uh, approve the request for major variance uh, for 35 Herbert Street, PID 108 to reduce the required minimum rear setback from 7.5 meters, 24.6 feet, to approximately 5.76 meters, 18.9 feet, in order to allow for the subdivision of an existing semi-detached dwelling. Questions called? Questions called, okay. Kate, please cast your vote. Okay. Still we have one out. Outstanding. There's one outstanding. It's eight zero. Who didn't vote? Okay, okay, that's good. Okay, nine zero. <laughs> okay. Okay, do you want to read the uh, next one, please? Moved by Deputy Mary Ankoff, seconded by Councillor Beck, be it resolved that Council deny the request for a major variance for 14 Oak Drive, PID 390401, to reduce the required minimum lot frontage from 18 meters, 59.1 feet, to be approximately 6.09 meters, 20 feet, to allow a single detached dwelling to be constructed on the subject property. Okay. Councilor Drawn. So, Councilor Drawn, you got a few questions, just put them all in one package. <laughs> Try to get them all in at once. Okay. Take your time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there's a little bit of, of controversy here, you know, with, with, with neighbors, with, with this existing flag lot. Um, and, 
you know, you look at it, and, and if someone owns a parcel of land, you know, it's been in the family for a number of years. So there was, there was easements, there was driveways used to get in and out through Mount Edward and one on Oak. So I watched the planning board meeting and there was some discussion uh, about options and one was to come off Macmillan. But, but that wasn't on, on the application. So when you look at it, uh, the whole thing we're looking at here is can you use the existing driveway or the existing square footage of, to be used as a driveway? That's the issue here. And I, and I think in the planning board, you know, people got asking questions and we, we you know, we get kind of concerned or confused about what was the application. And I think the application was to use the, the driveway, the existing uh, easement into the land. So, you know, when, when we're sitting here and, and the planner was trying to give as much information, he did a good job uh, to, to, to try to, to get everyone on the same page. So I'm just looking, I, d I don't know if, if there's any way that council can either defer this so all the questions are asked or should we just vote on it? Uh, I think there's a, a few questions myself to see if there's, you know, if, if the application can use a different driveway off of McMillan or that's not allowed, uh, the existing landowner uh, doesn't want that. So I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, where do we go with this? There was a lot of, a lot of questions came out of it when I watched it. So. You know, I know the recommendation was was against uh, to approve this, but I'm just I'm concerned that all the information is not on the table, and I wouldn't want council to make a decision when there's there's dip different options available. So, if anybody would like to rebut what I'm saying, and maybe you know you were on the planning board and you feel that you know the information that was put forward was good enough for you to make an informed decision, then. Then, uh, then so be it. So I just wanted to throw that out there and, and looking for discussion. To stay up, Councilor Tony. Right. So, sure. do you want to def put a deferral on the floor to get more information? Okay, I'll put that on now. Yeah, I was because if it if it gets accepted, great. If it doesn't, then we go back to the original vote. That's okay. Right. That that'd be great. So, is someone willing to accept uh, second the uh, the deferral? Just one second, Councilor Bernard, or do you want to? Deputy Mayor Yankoff. Yeah, um, <clears throat> thank you, Councillor Drawn, um, and and I will actually support his. Um, You'll second it. Yeah, I will okay. second it. Um, yeah, for sure. I I think that um, we can do our due diligence and get a lot of the additional questions answered for sure. Okay, yeah. so now the the, the the question's just on the deferral. It's not on the resolution. Okay, that's it's on the deferral only, Councillor Bernard. <clears throat> Can you no, just stand I have my, up? Bu I have my button pressed for uh, anyway. I, I'm okay with the deferral. If there's that, if the question's not answered, then yeah, I'm okay with deferral. Okay, Councilman Tard. Uh, thank you, Worship. I too would be in support of the deferral. I I, I feel reading the, through the package, it was I had more questions than answers. There was uh, this is a very complex piece of property. We're talking three different entrance ways. We're talking easements. We're talking. Uh, infrastructure. There was a number of things yeah. that were all intertwined, and we did receive some feedback uh, from uh, all the parties involved, which added even more complexity to the situation. Uh, so I think uh, if we're able to go back and have a you know another uh, go at fleshing out some of that uh, information to get a better decision, would be helpful for me. Okay, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. And I would just encourage everyone, if it, at the time when we do vote on this deferral, if the deferral is successful and it's heading back for additional questions, I encourage you all to put pen to paper and get your questions out in an email so that we can actually have them all answered instead of being here in two weeks' time and still not have your questions answered. So make sure you get those Send them to me or send them to David, whatever you want, but get those questions out there so we can get them answered. Okay? Councilor Durant, second time. Second time. And, yep. and, I, and that's what I, you know, I'm, I'm asking for the deferral because, 
what happens if you make a decision and you don't have the proper information? That's, that's the main thing that I'm worried about. You know, was the application for the easement for the driveway, and then it said McMillan Crescent. I don't think that was on the application, but we were kind of, you know, had mis mixed messages, if that's even possible you know, due to the frontage or, or that. I just feel that, you know, to be a black and white decision, there should be more information come forward. Uh, all parties involved can, can submit reports. Everybody can be updated, and then when it comes back, we can just say, listen, this is a, a yes or a no on an informed decision. That's, that's all I ask. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Beck. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't disagree with the deferral either. I, I, Typically not in favor of them, but I, do, I think it fits in this one. Uh, I too had qu questions. I too uh, had to think quite a bit about this uh, situation. Um, I do want to echo what the deputy said. I was going to say the exact same thing. If we're coming back, we have to know exactly what we're reconsidering or what we're coming back for the deferral for, and that's always important because I was going to say well, I don't want to make a decision now, but what are you still questioning? So I, I do want to, I'm glad you mentioned that, Deputy, and um, look forward to continuing the discussion and see if we can get a uh, resolution to this situation. Thank you. Uh, the question for uh, David through the chair. Uh, you know, over the last few days, emails have been sent to each and every one of us, phone calls made, a lot of confusion about understanding what took place at Planning Board. From your perspective, can you, can you tell us what, what the confusion centered around? David, just I have to respect the chair of the committee, and so I know you do too. Deputy, can you just take a crack at it first, or just how, what are your, what's your opinion? You were there. I was there, yeah. Um, so there, there, as Councillor Duran pointed out, as Councillor Beck pointed out, um, a lot of questions came forward after, um, the, ap after the application was um, put on the floor, after we heard the presentation, and oftentimes that can happen. Um, a variance application comes in and more questions come out than, than were answered at the time, so therefore more questions came about even after that meeting. So, you know, planning staff had recommended we support the major variance. Planning board unanimously voted against that. So as Councillor Duran pointed out, maybe some of the questions that planning board was asking were not relevant. Maybe they were. That's why we're taking this time to get these additional questions answered. And if you have additional questions, get those sent out to David as well. And if that didn't satisfy you for an answer, David, have at it. Could, could we just get to... Mr. Gundrum, can you just, I think, provide an additional information? Sure. Uh, through the chair to try to answer Councillor Twill's question, I guess fundamentally what the applicants were asking for was a variance to required lot frontage so that they could create the flag-shaped lot as they proposed. Um, they didn't consider any other access as part of that proposal other than the access to the north off of Oak, Dri <laughs> Oak Drive. Um, it was understood by staff. Uh, that a potential access to the west on Mount Edward Road wasn't going to be supportable by Public Works, that Public Works wouldn't be willing to issue an access permit, uh, given the nature of Mount Edward Road being a collector road, higher traffic. Um, and regarding a potential connection to McMillan, uh, there is no legal frontage of the lot onto McMillan Crescent. Um, in order to achieve that, one would have to extend McMillan Crescent across private land have a public road created in that area to create that legal frontage and access, which isn't inconceivable, but there'd be some process to go through to achieve that. So fundamentally, I guess to answer your question, Councillor Twill, what the applicants were asking for was a variance to lot frontage <coughs> onto, onto Oak Drive to enable a new lot to be created. And without that vari <coughs> variance being permitted, um, they can't create the lot and they can't apply for a building permit to create a new dwelling on the on said lot, so, yeah. Councilor Twill, second question. If there was to be an entrance on McMillan, to McMillan Crescent, who would bear the cost? David, um, just reminded by the chair, this is on the deferral. So I think what your questions would be 
better served or better yeah yeah just send them to david by email yeah answer the question david uh, this second question through through the chair councillor twill the road if it were extended would have to be built to city standards um private developer whoever that may be the property owners in that area would have to upfront that cost um, and then that road would be conveyed to the city as a public road um, so it, there could be a cost sharing agreement perhaps worked out with the city but up front they are private lands if a road were to be created it would have to be at the cost of whoever the private proponents are and then it would have to be built to our standards and then handed over to the city as a, as a conveyance of land uh, to affirm it as a new open public road or extension of an existing public road. So to answer the question, the upfront cost would not necessarily have to be borne by the city in this in this case. Yeah. Thank you, David. And uh, in your digital copy there, Council Twill, just go from page 45 to 79, the whole report's there that was presented to, to uh, the planning board. Okay. Question call on the deferral there, Council Ramsey. Okay, just one second, sir. Hold on. Please cast your vote. John, did you cast your vote, Council Mackler? To keep on you there, Council Mackler. I'm keeping an eye on you. All in? Okay. Eight one and Council Maclear against. Okay. Accept. Okay. Eight one. On the deferral. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Could you read the next resolution? And Eleanor, CAO Eleanor, just before you read this, Deputy. This all goes back to the planning board, correct? Is that what we do? This this deferral goes back to the, or does it just come back to council? What's what's the path forward? You could ask them with the deferral, but it would just come back to council with whatever information you're looking for. Yeah. So, but if it goes back to planning board, planning board meeting is an open meeting. And if someone wishes to speak, it's up to the chair to allow someone to speak at that planning board meeting, correct? Planning, planning board's already made their recommendation to you. So at this point, council is requesting more information. Okay. So that information will be brought back to council. Got you. So there's no planning board meeting. As you said earlier, any questions, concerns, please email them to yourself, David, or Donna, correct? Okay. Thank you. Moved by Deputy Mary Yankoff, seconded by Councillor Beck. Be it resolved that Council approve the request for major variance for 480-482 Queen Street, PID 371203, to decrease the minimum required rear yard setback from 7.5 meters to 24.6 or 24.6 feet to approximately 4.39 meters, 14.4 feet. Okay. Questions called? Always good to hear that question. Please cast your vote. Councillor McAleer, just. Good. Nine zero. Okay. Do you wish to go with the next one there? Site specific exemption request for one nine. You see that one? Ready? Yep. <laughs> Moving too quick for you. One. Uh, moved by Deputy Mary Ankoff, seconded by Councillor Beck. Be it resolved that Council approve the request for a site specific exemption to Section 30.2 Regulations for Permitted Uses and to Section 30.3 
bonus height development standards of the downtown mixed use neighborhood zone of the zoning and development bylaw and that council approved the request for a site specific amendment to the city of charlottetown official plan that regards provisions of section 4.2.3 of the official plan to allow for the construction of eight uh, of an eight story 158 unit apartment building that would include 32 affordable housing units with parking located under the building at 199 Grafton Street, 156 Prince Street, PID 342-790. And further that, this approval shall be the subject uh, to the following. Uh, A, compliance with the recommendation of the Design Review Board that the seventh and eighth stories of the apartment building be stepped back a distance of eight feet along the building wall profile facing west towards Prince Street. B, approval of a maximum permitted building height of 26.8 meters, 88 feet, which exceeds the bonus height provisions of section 30.2 or 30.3.2A of the Zoning and Development Bylaw for the Downtown Mixed Use Neighborhood Zone. C, a lot consolidation of all part parcels identified under PID 342790, subject to a pinned final survey plan. D, the property owner or owners enter, entering into a development agreement with the city of Charlottetown that prescribes the detailed terms and conditions of the approval of the development. And E, the following are the variances comprised within the site-specific exemption for the property, some of which already apply through the existing approved site-specific exemption already in place as approved in 2021 through bylaw PHZD.2-046 uh, and are hereby repeated here for reference. <coughs> height variance to eight stories with a permitted maximum building height of 26.8 meters, 88 feet which thereby exceeds maximum bonus height of 18.5 meters, 60.7 feet by a total of 8.3 meters, 27.3 <coughs> feet. Flankage yard variance along Clark Street already approved through bylaw PH-ZD.2-046 to allow for a minimum setback of 0.6 meters, two feet, whereas 2.4 meters, 7.9 feet is otherwise required. Lot width variance along Hillsborough Street, already approved through bylaw PH-ZD.2-046 uh, to allow for a minimum lot width of 22.7 meters, 74.5 feet, whereas 30 meters, 98.4 feet is otherwise required where bonus height is involved. Side yard variance to the property boundary, bounding 142-146 Prince Street, PID 343053 already approved through bylaw PH-ZD.2-046 uh, to allow for a minimum setback of 0.6 meters, 1.96 feet, whereas 1.2 meters, 3.9 feet is otherwise required. An exemption from section 7.11.3 of the zoning and development bylaw for parking structure, for, for the parking structure, already approved through bylaw PH-ZD.2-046, which states, where a parking structure fronts on a street, the ground level uh, facade shall incorporate retail, public, or other active uses, as well as provide pedestrian amenities, such as an awning, canopy, or sheltered entryway. And the front facade shall be designed to conceal the parking levels and gives the visual appearance of a multi-story building articulated with bays and window openings. Anything in, anything in there about the mailbox? This has been as long as the time it took to get to this point. Okay. Councillor Twill. I'd like to, uh, to express my appreciation to the developer for having the patience to come back and work with uh, planning staff. Um, you know, this, this particular application has been in the news for well over a year now. Uh, there's been a lot, of, a lot of discussions, a lot of philosophical differences. It's been to Iraq. There's been frustrations with uh, the length of time that Iraq takes to hear such an appeal. Um, and I know there's a lot that goes into uh, uh, to, to assessing an appeal. Uh, but uh, the site specific, I think, hopefully will address any of the legalities or any questions from that perspective. You know, we, we hear, we read, uh, people are saying, you know, we need more uh, housing units in the downtown. Uh, this, I believe, will go a long way 
to um, to providing that uh, that type of housing in our downtown. I think there'll be less emphasis on vehicle traffic, uh, pedestrian traffic, and the people living there will be able to walk to the different amenities and businesses in the downtown. And uh, I, th I think this uh, this formula will work out well. And I really believe that if it, it is appealed to Iraq, it'll be able to uh, uh, you know, address all of the issues that planning board and now council uh, have had the opportunity to to read uh, read the report. Again, I'll reiterate it's been a very lengthy process, but I do believe it's a, a good facility and a good development for downtown Charlottetown. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Treel. Councilor Beck. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Your Worship. Um, Councilor Twill just did talk about. Uh, the patience of the of the developer. I do want to also uh, give a tip of the hat to our planners as well too. Um, this has not been an easy file, and uh, it I think what it kind of showed to me was that when we're looking at development, I think we're looking at this comprehensively. There was a lot of work that went into this behind the scenes in order to make it happen, and I know. David and Donna haven't been with us too long uh, in their various roles. So to walk in, take on a file like that, um, get a handle on it, get, get behind it, understand it, know what the issues are, and to be able to move it forward, I think we, uh, we have to recognize certainly the work that, that you guys did in that in terms of maneuvering that around. So um, I think it was a great job in, on a very difficult file, so good work to the planning department as well. Fully agree with you. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, David, and CAO Muhammad, another professional planner. So it's it's been a win-win for all of us. Let's hope boots are on the ground, shovels are in the ground sooner than we think. Questions, Questions called. Okay. Just I had a couple more words to say. <laughs> Please cast your vote. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yep. Nine zero. Just let me get that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, uh, Donna. Michael Roos, thank you. I know you got a reading there. And it's item number to provide site-specific exemption to permit an eight-story apartment building at 199 Grafton Street, 156 Prince Street, PID number 342790. Please read it. Thank you, Your Worship. To adopt official plan amendment PH-OPA-1.041 that the development of the subject property identified as 199 Grafton Street, 156 Prince Street, PID 342790, with an eight-story, eight 158 unit apartment building, including 32 affordable housing units with parking located within and under the building is recognized in terms of the height, scale, and massing of the building as being transitional in nature with respect to section 4.2.3 of the official plan that concerns the downtown mixed use neighborhood de designation as it applies to the subject property. Be it resolved that the official plan amendment PH-OPA.1-041 as it pertains to 199 Grafton Street, 156 Prince Street, PID 342790, as attached, be adopted. Moved by Deputy Mary Ankoff, seconded by sec uh, Councillor Beck. Shall it carry? Okay. Shall it carry? Pass. Okay. Nine zero. To adopt bylaw PH ZD.2 079, a bylaw to amend the zoning and development bylaw to provide a site-specific exemption for the subject property identified as 199 Grafton Street, 156 Prince Street, PID 342790, 
to permit an eight-story apartment building on the subject property having 158 dwelling units, including 32 affordable housing units, by amending append Appendix C, approve site-specific exemptions, as per Section 3.11, site-specific exemptions of the Zoning and Development Bylaw, to exempt 199 Grafton Street, 156 Prince Street, PID 342790, from certain provisions of section 30.2, regulations for permitted uses in the downtown mixed use neighborhood zone, and section 30.3, bonus height development standards in the downtown mixed use neighborhood zone, exceeding a maximum bonus height of 18.5 meters, 60.7 feet, as required in 30.3.2A of the zoning and development bylaw to allow for a total maximum building height of 26.8 meters, 88 feet, with a total height above bonus height to be 8.3 meters, 27.3 feet, and to not step back the portion above the base building that is a bonus in height along a 45 degree angular plane originating from the top of the flank or rear facade of the base building that faces abutting residential dwellings or within the downtown neighborhood zone in order to allow an eight story, 158 unit apartment building uh, including 32 affordable housing units with parking located within and under the building to be constructed on the subject property. Be it resolved that the bylaw to amend the City of Charlottetown Zoning and Development Bylaw, PH-ZD.2-079, as it pertains to 199 Grafton Street, 156 Prince Street, PID 342790, as attached, be read a first time and approved, and that it be read a second time at the next public meeting of council. Moved by Deputy Mayor Yankov, seconded by Councillor Breck. Shelley Carey. Uh, Nine zero. And Deputy, I want to thank you and the planning board for all the work that this took to get it to this point. Thank you very much. Okay. So we're going to the next item, and it's 4C 2024-2025 operational budget. Thank you, uh, Eleanor. <clears throat> Councilor Beck? Just a question, um, and I, I probably should have asked it before, before in this, but um, it, it was referencing to not go back on the 45 degree angular, and we, we agreed on the 70 degree angle. You can't ask that. But it, it went through no, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to understand for future. Yeah. That, can, I, can I ask that now, or? Uh, or does that have to be outlined in it? Because I know, I know what we talked about, but yeah. does that have to be outlined? I'm just that, trying to ask for. I know, it, it, it should have been brought up in the first reading. Second reading, there's no debate. We've already passed it. Okay, no, I'm just trying to understand yeah. the process. But we can get an explanation afterwards, Donna and David. Councillor uh, McCabe. Absent, just one second. Okay, John, do you, uh, Councillor McLear, do you want to introduce the, what we're doing today or tonight? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Brown. Um, just, um, uh, Council, um, he, uh, had before you here, we're coming back to our operational uh, operational budget. Um, as you know, uh, basically at the kind of the end of our last meeting, um, um, we had uh, kind of uh, settled on the the idea of uh, on the new initiative side of 1.5 uh, being uh, being a, being a number to, for uh, Eleanor and her team to go back and work with and. And there was some additional uh, additional work that the uh, Danny and, and Eleanor and their team did uh, in addition uh, to that, um, because uh, you know the uh, this process. I think uh, I spent some time with Danny today, and uh, and I think uh, as uh, as uh, Danny took us through on the uh, the capital budget of uh, you know that process where we. Uh, where, where the budgeting uh, was a little out of sync with what uh, the expectations were in a year. And um, we know we're trying to get with that in terms of budgeting on the capital side going forward. We're trying to get the, you know, the work to, to line up with what we think the actual spends would be. So on the operating side, I, I think uh, Danny also found some things that uh, there's been a bit of a pattern uh, that uh, he's gonna speak to here. He's prepared some information. 
and um, he uh, he was able to uh, go back and talk with uh, with staff again. Um, uh, just on, on, on the operating side, uh, don't think he held a gun to anyone's head, but he just asked about, you know, were there any possible uh, possible savings and uh, that could be uh, that could be uh, identified with the uh, operating uh, budgets uh, uh, that we have. So I'll uh, I'll let Danny share what uh, what uh, come out of that, and he'll step us through. He's going to give us a, a bit of a presentation. And hopefully uh, the objective tonight, my, my objective is, and I hope it's the rest of council, is that we uh, get this passed tonight. And because uh, we only have a couple of days, it's got to be presented on the 28th. So I'm asking for your support and, uh, and help to, uh, to get this thing over the line. Thank you. So again, this is a budget discussion. I, I don't think it requires two questions per person. I think it's... You know, this is the time to get your questions out because we don't want these questions coming up on Thursday at noon hour, having a full day debate. I think this is where we can have it right now. So, but please be respectful that others do want to ask questions. So keep that in mind when you're asking your questions. Councilor Twill, you go first. My uh, first question is, we just got this now. Was this sent out to us? It was in, it was in the OneDrive, sir. What? It, it was, was in the OneDrive. It was? Yeah. No. No, it wasn't. No. Well, that's where I got it. Well, you might have it. Well, why wouldn't you get it? Because we're, we're on the same no, one. No, I'm asking the question. Was this sent out to all members of city council prior, prior to tonight's meeting? That's my first question. No, it wasn't council trail as well. No. So it wasn't. But you had it. Yeah, I have it here. The one well, drive. the mayor had it, but the rest yeah. of the council didn't. Uh, I... Yeah. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. So... John? So yes, I, I got it earlier this afternoon. But okay, not it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't in advance of this afternoon. No, yeah, but it was in the drive before we came here. <coughs> yeah. It, yes. yes or no? no? Yeah. Yes, it was, John. Well, I, I was I was here at four o'clock, and uh, that's when I sat down with Danny and got this. So it may have been in my the one drive before that. Councilman Tard. Why don't we give the administration office an opportunity to answer that question instead yeah. of council trying to determine if it's no, no, no. not there? No, no, no. But I was looking at it this afternoon, so I'm just saying I had it. Okay. I'm just so, answering his It yeah. wasn't just to the mayor. No, That's what I'm answering. Let, let's make, okay. uh, let Danny decide, uh, give us an opportunity to tell us when the file was provided to city council. Thank you. Councilor Twill, you're okay with that? Well, Go ahead. Yeah, yeah I'd, like to, I'd, like, I'd like to get my question answered. Was this sent? To all members of city council prior to tonight's meeting. Now, the mayor had it, the mayor's had it, senior management's had it, but was this sent to all members of city council prior to the meeting? Council McAleer. Council McAleer. Uh, council McAleer. Council let, let Danny I'll, answer. I'll defer that to, uh, to Danny, um, yeah. manager. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, through the chair to Councillor Twill. So uh, the um, the presentation was drafted today, uh, partially yesterday and, and today. Uh, I had a scheduled meeting with the chair uh, at 4 o'clock today to review the presentation, which we did. Um, he suggested a couple minor changes, and the, uh, the, the presentation was provided on the OneDrive a short time before the meeting, but it was before the meeting tonight. Uh, Tracy could clarify that. 448. 448. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Councilman Bernard, and then we can go to the president. Okay. Councilman Bernard. Um, and, I, and I guess I sent a couple of emails out. I think people know where I am on it. Um, I mean, it's always all right to go back and look at money, see if they can find some. But I guess all the work that we've done up to this date, and it's been compressed. We know we were running behind, and it's been a compressed month. But the last time we met, we agreed on a capital budget, we agreed on an operational budget, and we agreed 1.5 million would go into new initiatives. And I'm wondering what changed? Because normally when that happens, it goes back, the only thing that was left is that the CAO would come back to us on the 1.5 and the new initiatives to see what, what recommendations were coming from there. And all of a sudden I see now that Directors were out talking to management about trying to find more money, which 
really should have been done first. Because we went, we, we're going through like cats and dogs trying to come up with a capital budget, cutting, cutting. Um, so I'm not against trying to find extra money. It probably should have been done first thing. It's always been done during the budget process. Once we make our agreements, then we're ready for budget. This seemed to come out of nowhere where all of a sudden somebody wants more money, so we better start looking. So uh, I'd be interested to hear, hear what Dan has to say, hear the presentation. Councilor McAleer, did, did you want to? Councilor yeah, McAleer. Uh, Councilor Bernard, um, fair, fair comment. Um, I, and uh, I certainly don't have the tenure or someone like yourself. You've uh, been in the finance chair. You, you, you know what? Uh, you kind of know what goes on, but I, I, I certainly don't think there's anything contrived uh, about what's going on here. I think uh, we have uh, CFO Danny, who's in a new role. Uh, he's worked uh, working with Betty and the CAO. Um, there's no doubt that the, uh, from what I understand, uh, the reality is I think that the budget, uh, the budget coming together this year has been certainly a little disjointed, and 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 you are correct. Since the last meeting, uh, there was the, uh, the, you know, there was the, I guess the understanding preps or the, you know, off the 1.5 to work, to work with that number. But uh, um, Danny, to his credit, in my opinion, um, just went back. Um, he's um, he's still kind of feeling his way, and uh, just uh, wanted to uh, again discuss with department heads. Uh, we know that uh, the ask the ask for new initiatives started at 4.7. It landed at two, and then we ended up at 1.5. So um, I uh, I uh, you know I certainly don't fault uh, Danny and. Uh, in you know, in process and where he is, I'd like to uh, uh, go through the presentation that you have here before me. And, and Councillor Twill, I uh, apologize for the lateness, but if we um, give Danny uh, the benefit of, uh, let's go through the presentation. Let's hear his uh, uh, his uh, rationale as to you know uh, how we got here and and what he recommends, and see if we can't make some uh, decisions and finalize this this evening. Thank you. Yeah. And let's just keep in mind, it is the same spreadsheet that we had in draft one, draft two, draft three. Now we have lines through them to indicate how they took it from 2 million to 1.5. Okay, Dan, do you wanna? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, thank you. Uh, so uh, just to get going, uh, this is our third meeting of council to talk about uh, the financial plan and we were, uh, we left, uh, last Monday with clear instructions to come up with uh, new initiatives to move forward, uh, totaling a million five, um, which we've done. Um, all of this process has, uh, has you know, been a little bit uh, of an adjustment from prior years. Uh, part of that is, is the fact that you have all new people doing that process for the most part. Um, our CAO was just hired in the very final few days of a uh, budget process last year. Uh, Betty came in a few weeks ahead of time, um, uh, but uh, there has been a lot of uh, turnover and, and in personnel in the in the finance office. Um, but uh, I, I I will say that I'd given. The, the, um, uh, the challenges with corporate history and, and uh, awareness of the, the processes uh, in the past, um, I do think that the finance team has done a, an excellent job of, of pulling this together um, with uh, very slim resources, to be, to be, to be honest. Um, you have a small but mighty team uh, up on the third floor and they've worked hard, long hours, weekends, and um, trying to do the best job that they can. And uh, having a, a new director come in, uh, time, trying to learn and, and observe, and perhaps put uh, uh, put a little spin on things that, uh, that is, a, is a new dimension, um, just complicates that. So um, I, ju I just want to acknowledge staff uh, for, what, for what they've done. Um, the uh, the budget process certainly is an operational plan that is uh, an, an execution document in terms of what our strategic priorities are that arise out of the strategic plan, and is a kind of a key component to that to that um, that document. Um, Coming out of the direction from Council on March 19th to uh, select those new initiatives to move forward um, for Council's approval. Um, the administration has uh, made those uh, choices, uh, difficult choices. I will, I will um, 
uh, offer. Um, none of those new initiatives, in in the opinion of um, administration, were were not worthy asks. Um, so to to take a a short list down to an even shorter list was was a was a big challenge. Um, each uh, councillor seems to have an area where they're particularly sensitive about um, cutting spending or or uh, making um, making expenditures and um, trying to uh, address all of the um, points of view is is uh, as, as you folks know well from being uh, on 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 council and in chambers on a regular basis um, is is uh, is a little challenging and we're we're trying to work with our department heads and staff to reflect as best we can the information that, that they've passed along in terms of their challenges and their their needs and and wants that being said, um, where we ended up is um, we had knocked off the Confederation Center of the Arts uh, capital contribution or operational grant um, uh, at the 19th meeting. Uh, the civic events staff, which was um, not not um, um, hired personnel employees of the city, but um, would be contracted consultants to assist with um, pulling off some of the civic events that we that we host during the summer, um, we we eliminated that budget line. Uh, the hope is that they'll be able to source that, um, uh, you know, manage with existing budgets. Um, the um, next one that we cut was the financial analyst uh, consulting contract that I had identified as, as a priority to reflect um, the direction from the finance uh, committee and council about the importance of getting our procurement bylaw uh, redrafted um, and procedures and, and training done to get that, that executed. Um, I took that off the table not because I don't feel it's important, um, but in looking um, at the operational budget a little more closely, um, the latter part of last week, um, which I'll talk about a little more lately, uh, uh, later, um, that uh, I, I did find some additional budget in, in the finance and fiscal services that I think we can get that work, work done if, uh, if we're not able to manage it in-house. So I, I felt comfortable in, in, in pulling that out of the uh, operational budget as for new initiatives. Uh, next on the um, uh, list to come off was the Parks Foreman position, uh, an $87,000 uh, expenditure. Um, while um, you know that creates some challenges for Frank, um, he he was um, he he was uh, uh, not alarmed, I guess, at at the loss of that position. Although he, he you know does feel that it uh, would greatly enhance his ability to deliver uh, Parks and Recreation. Um, the uh, policing, uh, police officers, we had initially uh, started with 10 police officers. Uh, Chief McConnell was um, uh, prepared to reduce that ask to f uh, five police officers. Uh, on this list, we've divided it into four, which we uh, are moving forward uh, for your um, for your approval. Uh, four officers at a cost of five hundred twenty thousand, and removing one from that list at a cost of one hundred thirty thousand. Um, the other item that was uh, uh, removed from the list was one cleaner position, um, a public works uh, building maintenance, uh, making that a, a, a permanent position, um, but there would be contract savings uh, because some of those services are contracted out currently. Um, the net saving there was $31,267. So the end result is um, 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 uh, new initiatives list at uh, just a little south of 1.5 million. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my role as the director of, of finance and, and CFO, and and how I see my role um, to serve you and uh, the rest of staff and and the residents of Charlottetown. Um, I believe that that the primary role is is to provide thought leadership that helps council and the CAO to allocate the financial resources of the city's um, departments in a manner that maximizes the quality and reach of services, programs, and facilities available to residents. Um, 
an effective budgeting process is really um, a, a cornerstone or, or the single most effective tool to help council choose the mix of services, programs, and facilities uh, that best match uh, your, your residents' willingness to pay through property taxes. Um, I'll, I'll show you some graphics later, but um, just a, a statement that consistently overstating operating budgets uh, budget deficits uh, can result in um, charging higher property taxes than is necessary to provide uh, delivered services, programs, and facilities. Um, it may also result in choosing not to introduce, expand, or improve services and facilities that residents may be prepared to pay for, uh, and and also understanding the, the city's ability to fund capital projects. So if, if um, the operating budgets aren't accurate, for lack of a better uh, term, it's really difficult for council to understand what latitude they have to, to make, make choices in that respect. Okay. Dan, can I just, uh, I got some questions about uh, the administration choices. Let's just go back to that before we, sure. I think that's, we wanted to finish off your list. Council Tool, can you just, you were, you were the first, press your button there, please. Okay, okay so, uh, are you to, on the on the new initiatives? Is that what you are? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Administrative choice. So, are we going to take a vote and go down the line as to what council accepts and what they don't accept? No, I think what we said the other night was instead of two million, we went down to one point five, and she was to come back with her list. That's what she came back with. That's my understanding. So we're going to vote for this as a package as opposed to going down through line item, there's about what, 20 line items here. Yeah. Some of us uh, are in favor of some, and some, some of us are not in favor of others. So, um, so you're just voting on the package, as opposed to uh, going down line item by line item. Yeah. Is that correct? Correct. And I think that was uh, the chair of human resources was one of the persons that said, instead of going line by line, allow the, uh, the CAO to go back and come up with her list, and if I'm wrong, you can correct me, uh, Councilman Tart, but that's where we are right now. So it's just a yes or no on this package? No, it's, it's what it is, is we'll be voting on the one package as is. As is, take it or leave it, right? Yep. Okay, good. Okay, Council Bernard, Council Duran, and Councilman Tart. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so I'm looking at the list that was handed to us. I'm looking at the one that we were that we were trying to address in the past. So a lot of things aren't on it. So am I to assume that if it's not on this list, stroked off, that it's still not? Like, for, I guess one of my first question is the admin assistant that we have in environment sustainability and the sustainability project officer. Two positions that we have that are not permanent. <clears throat> one's $9,800 and one's $10,000 to make them permanent. One's been here four years, one's two years. Is that not in the new one? Is that not uh, in the budget now? Uh, Dan? Uh, thank you, Your Worship, uh, through the chair to Councillor Bernard. So the, the request, as I understand it, and, and further um, conversation with you, was to take the new initiatives that had been moved forward by the administration, which was the $2,055,000, um, and, and reduce that to $1.5 million. The two positions that, that you mentioned were not recommended by administration for consideration by council. Um, those didn't make it from the, the, the four million plus list to the to the two million dollar list. Um, so those were, were two items that um, uh, that didn't come to this list. Uh, in the interest of uh, you know clarity, I just wanted to show on this list those items that were moved forward. Um, by uh, administration to to be added the short list if you will and then the um, uh, highlight the items that uh, um, you know reflect the administration's choice in terms of getting to that 1.5 million so okay so what I, what, when I read the uh, the new initiative letter that went with it would have come from the manager um, and this would be the sustainability project officer to avoid staff turnover provide staff with job security, and to continue to meet our environmental goals, it's recommended we make this essential position permanent. Um, the most recent person in this position was hired with a two-year contract, and there's evidence that this position is needed full-time. 
So you have management telling you, you need that position. And if I understand this right, we're saying we're not putting it in. It's not part of the new initiatives. And, and is that, is it, 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 I think that's what I got from you, Dan, is that uh, you had a cut somewhere and that was one of the cuts, is that correct? Um, Dan? Yeah, the, the, um, through the chair to Councilor Bernard. So those two positions weren't on the, uh, what, what we would call the short list of the 2055000 Um So it, it was certainly a tall order to get from the 2055000 to something south of $1.5 um, uh, So you and I did have a conversation about those two positions. And um, uh, I, I, I will um, say that there, we, we, this is what uh, I understand your, your position is, is this is what council asked us to do um, so we've we've done that I, I will follow with some additional information that may give council some latitude to to make some additional choices in terms of uh, some priorities that they they would like to move forward um, can, can, no council Bernard we'll, we'll come no we'll come back because we're going we I know no we'll come back council McAleer just what, thank, what, you. Th thank you, Mayor Brown. Uh, again, just uh, I'd like to encourage, uh, if we could, is, is let Dan finish his presentation, um, and, and certainly I'll circle back to uh, the, 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 these new initiatives. And then, so this is not to this is not to ram anything through, but uh, I think it would be helpful if Dan can finish his presentation, and then we go to questions, if we could. And I think it will help to uh, to uh, uh, speed speed things up, uh, not uh, not not in haste, but uh, in efficiency. Thank you. Um, but 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 I think what we when we left Councillor Macleir, it was about the new initiatives, and if I look at the presentation, there's there's a lot of of, of information that's very important. But again, I think some of the councillors want to ask questions about the, the list before we move on. And again, I'm in full agreement with that. All I'm suggesting is let Dan finish his presentation, and then let's come back. Yeah, Is that yeah. No, I, I think we'll just continue on with this list. I think that's what we're going to do. And then we'll, Council Drawn. Thank you, Mayor Brown, and, and thank you for this. And I, I understand at the last uh, meeting we uh, voted and gave the CAO the uh, ability to come back with a 1.5. That's what Council voted at that time. But my question here is the dealing with the federal government and the accelerator fund. I know planning department, you know, is facing challenges, big challenges. When I talk to the public, they're always asking me about how long does it take to get a permit? There's developments that are sitting on the side, there's building permits, you know, they're taking a long time and, and people are losing builders. So this whole idea of the accelerator fund and and we're accepting it you know a month ago we accepted it was to get a lot of people in place and this was going to speed up um, permits this is going to be speeding up all sorts of things and it looked very promising but then when I look at this here none of those positions are are on the are on the docket uh, to be approved so so we're going back to heaven no help is is that safe to say you know can can someone answer that yes uh, through the chair to councillor duran so you'll notice at the bottom of that list there are um, uh, one two three four five six seven uh, new initiatives that are moving forward but they're fully funded through the housing accelerator fund um, so those are all uh, initiatives that would be moving forward um, and and funded through that through that mechanism well, that's a tremendous relief. Um, I'm looking at it and, and looking at this graph, it, it doesn't show that, right? Councillor, at half funding at the top, that's how it's an accelerator fund. Half funding, okay. That's what it is. And it's a, it's a $10 million, $10.1, $10.2 million fund, or 10.1 over three years. So when I was looking at the new choices, the administration choices, it's all blank. So, 
Yeah, that's an that's an understandable. Uh, uh, it, it's not clear from that that those are moving forward. I okay. probably should have indicated in that administration choice a, a, a yes or something to indicate that they were going forward. But because they were fully funded, there's there's no impact on the operational budget. So I was looking at it from a financial perspective. Terrific. Thank you very much for the clarification. Councilman Carrick. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, you know, as I sit here and you know, and since our last meeting, I'm I'm really struggling with, you know, the we, we were we were you know trying to get down to five hundred thousand dollars to put into some extraordinary fund for a just in case moment um, at the detriment of taking off now what we feel as six initiatives, but we're still sitting here debating the six initiatives that we're taking off and whether they're the right ones or the wrong ones. So in the grand scheme of the big budget. I don't know, $80 million. Uh, are we doing this over $500,000 so we can have a $500,000, a $1.5 million uh, extraordinary fund that we may or may not use? I think the last time it was discussed at council here that we never accessed that fund in a number of years. So now for some reason we feel that that is important to have at the detriment of $500,000 to lose a police officer uh, and another other uh, number of positions here. I, I just I just don't know what we're... We're, you know, uh, and, and we have a balanced budget is what the last time uh, was presented. I think we were very close to a balanced budget. I'm just really struggling with, we're splitting hairs here over $500,000. And I, and, I, and I vote in favor of sticking with the $2 million. I'm going to vote in favor again of sticking with the $2 million. I think we're just, we're just nitpicking here now to get down to uh, this extraordinary fund, what seemed to be what's driving all of this. Yeah. Councilor Beck. <clears throat> I guess that... Ship, I, I'd agree with you, but I think that ship sailed last with the vote last week, did it not? When it was decided to move forward and to cut five hundred thousand dollars. I guess I'm just trying to, you know, I think I was talking with Eleanor and Danny that I feel this process has been death by a thousand cuts, <laughs> and it's been going back, and we've been trying to find. Um, <clears throat> so. If I'm looking at the reduction, uh, we've re we've re we've reduced uh, five hundred and sixty-three thousand dollars, correct? From two point oh two two million fifty-five thousand to fourteen ninety-two. Can we throw a bone back in and put in that fifteen thousand dollars into the civic support staff and get something in there or? trying to get back to um, some, maybe some things that were either off this list. Um, you know, I'm trying, I mean, I'm just trying to throw something back in if we can that won't too grow, uh, adversely affect our overall number. So if we're going, to, you know, that reduces 560 some thousand to 550,000. Uh, but it still <clears throat> it still puts something back into the operational side of things that has been identified. I know I know we can't go back and we can't put up back another police officer. We can't go back and put in another whatever. But I'm just trying to see if can we put something back in yeah. uh, out, out of this. It would, would, would just be my only food for thought. Yeah. Or yeah. It, it's taken. We'll take no Councilor Twill. Well, I, I thought uh, Councilor Beck that. I was told because I wanted to get down line by line item so council could vote on each one of these initiatives. But I was told no. Uh, you know, this is the package, take it or leave it. So if we're going to do that, then you know what? I'm open to starting at, for example, looking at, say, the director of community services and seeing if there's an appetite for uh, support there amongst uh, all members of city council and going down the list. You know, if, if you want to add or delete, then I, I will go back to my request that we get down the list and to see what the appetite is for each one of these uh, new initiatives. Yeah. No. Councilor Bernard. Thank you. Um, I just want to say that, you know, I, I, th these are recommendations coming from senior management. That it's, they're not cast in stone. And I, and I guess, um, you know, be interested. I see at the back page here, it's, it's looking like it's 600 or 700,000 that, that uh, it's, they're looking that they're identifying. So I, there's probably room to, to, move, to move some things back in. I, I guess <clears throat> to, 
to me, I just wanted to say, you know, as elected officials, we, we got, to me, with three main priorities. We have our, our constituents of Sherrildtown, the residents of Sherrildtown. We're responsible for revenue and expenditures for the budget. We are responsible for that. Yep. And we're responsible for the CAO. So three things. So the revenue and expenditures, and, and you know, and, and Council Tweed was right on this one. I mean, that's what Council has to make the decisions on. That's part of our job, is making decisions. <coughs> So you need to go through the revenue and the expenditures, and in this with the new initiatives, we have to make decisions what do you want to spend the money on. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's, I, I never agreed with just giving two million dollars or a million and a half and going to shopping spree, but it, you know, without us having any say in it, there's things on this list I don't agree with that are being recommended. There's things on this list that are not on this list that I don't agree with. So uh, I, I think right now, I mean, I, I'd like to, let's see what Dan says about the money that they found, where they found it, because uh, that's another thing I don't know, is where did the money come from? Is it salary lines where people were supposed to be hired and haven't been hired and they, you know, been sitting there? So, uh, so I don't, that, those are questions that I have that I'd like to hear what Dan has to say and we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do. But at the end of the day, I, I do think that we do go through them. And we do make decisions. That's 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 what we were elected for. So, thank you, Councilor Mackler. Yeah, Mayor Brown. I uh, again, I ask again. Um, I think if if Dan can finish his presentation, um, let him finish his presentation. I think there'll be uh, a lot of a lot of things uh, uh, cleared up and uh, places for us to go in terms of uh, closing out on on uh, on this uh, on this budget. Again, um, I realize you're in the chair, but I think uh, I think uh, if Dan can finish, uh, we can circle back to this, and um, however you want to handle it, be fine by me. Yeah, just just before we move on, like the city solicitor, annual net cost zero. Like I don't know, is that a an accounting yay or nay? Like you, you're, and and I know what you're doing. You're saying. We're going to reduce the salary solicitor's fees, and that's how we'll pay for it. But if I look at the budget, unless you changed it again, draft two, you still budgeted four hundred and fifty thousand for solicitor fees. So wouldn't you put that down to three hundred? Is so that going to be put down to three hundred? Yes, Your Worship. So the the net effect would be so the, because it was a new initiative, it wasn't in the operational budget detail. Um, the one hundred and fifty seven would be what administration would hope to save in legal fees if this new initiative went forward. Um, the, um, at the meeting on the 19th, we did agree that we would reduce the legal um, budget from 450 to 400, and that's reflected in the new budget numbers. But uh, 157,000, we're gonna save that. So that should be in the, uh, the annual net cost. Yes. Yeah, so, so if put, if the new initiative is approved, then the then the budget for the uh, sol contract solicitor would be reduced, and then the the new employee would would uh, would be approved, and that would so that it would that hundred and fifty seven thousand would move from uh, solicitor costs contracted to um, a position for the city solicitor. Okay. Yeah. So again, draft two. I have it right here. Solicitors' fees budget. 24, 25, 450,000. You're saying it's down to 400, but yes. I don't. Have, that's not my. Yeah, there were sheet. there were three items that we that we adjusted last week. Um, there was uh, 24,000 dollars in equipment that came out of the city uh, city budget. Uh, there was 50,000 dollars in um, in um, uh, the legal fees, and that reduced the the operational budget by by 74,000. Okay. Just last question. So that'll go down to three hundred thousand if this new initiatives are passed. It would go down to two hundred and and uh, forty thousand, roughly. Two hundred forty. Yeah. Okay. Councilor Bernard. Yeah. Thank you. I, I and I do remember that discussion, and I, and I think you were sipping. One of the concerns that we had when we brought that up was. Um, on paper, it may look good, 157,000, 160,000 to hire somebody, but we also know that right now with our, with our legal fee, we, ha we have a suite of lawyers. So there's a per particular issue, because we looked at this a few years ago, um, and what came back was, 
<laughs> the lawyers firm that we're with having a suite of lawyers, depending on what, what the issue is, the legal issue is, they have an expert for that particular issue. You're not going to get one lawyer that's going to have an expert, expertise in every issue. So you're going to be still contracting out or calling the lawyer's firm. You're still going to be ringing the lawyer's bill up. So are you going to save anything? A few years ago, it said not, but that's a decision I think council have to make. And I think it was 100, 450,000. I think last year's was 400,000. We were saying that we went through quite a legal exercise this past year with BDO. And uh, so I think the, the recommendation was to go back over the last four years and do an average. So I don't think they're going to be up to 450,000. Hopefully not. Um. Okay, so let's go back to observations to date. Is that your, yeah. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so when I started in, in January, um, I recognized that um, I don't have a lot of detailed experience with the City Corporation. Um, certainly watching from a distance through my role at Municipal Affairs, but in terms of detailed operational knowledge, um, precious little really. So my approach has been to listen, sit in in as many council and committee meetings, uh, talk to as many staff as I could to learn as much as I could. Um, and, and really, f for this budget process, didn't anticipate that I would be driving any major changes. Um, but there were a couple of touch points where I felt that I, I needed to not sit on my hands, but, but, but vector into the conversation and provide some uh, leadership in, in terms of um, steering the ship to some extent. And the first one was on the capital budget. Um, when I saw the the ask list of ninety million dollars, um, I didn't know enough about the city's financial situation to understand that um, that number uh, to spend in a, in a given year uh, would have dramatic impacts on uh, the tax rate for the residents of Charlottetown. And I also had a sense that um, most or many councillors didn't really have an appetite for increasing tax rates. So I, I, I did encourage everyone to go back to the drawing board to say, you know, not just what are nice to have projects, but what projects can you actually accomplish in the next 12 months? And 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 let's let's plan on doing those. And we we managed to whittle that list down um, collectively as council and and staff uh, to a little over 55 million um, a, a couple of weeks ago. So that was a, su a success in my in my mind. Um, observations to date, um, perhaps. Unintentional, but the budget process, uh, particularly uh, speaking today, um, the operational budget may be systematically um, uh, or structurally encouraging ongoing overstatement of operating budget expenditures and deficits. Um, it's a fact, and I'll show you the graph, that operating budgets and capital budgets have been consistently and materially overstated over the past five years. I showed you the graph on the capital budget uh, numbers. I won't go back to that one, but I will show you the operating budget spread. Um, I do have a moderate level of confidence, even with my uh, short uh, tenure here, uh, that the current operating budget expenditures are, are all, also overstated, and, and I think that's borne out by um, some of the information that I'll share with you a little later on. So this, this uh, chart shows um, the red numbers on the left are the budgeted operating deficits uh, that come off the audited financial statements since 2017-18. Uh, they range from uh, uh, 6.5 million um, uh, down to uh, 1.5 million um, over over that time period. Uh, the the green number, uh, the green bars, in each of those years, uh, the city actually experienced a surplus. Uh, once once the plan was executed and the, the, the results rolled in. What in 2023 was planned to be a $6.5 million deficit for that uh, fiscal year um, turned out to be a $3.7 million surplus. So the yellow number represents what I would consider um, the, uh, the, the difference from where we started at minus 6.5 to where we ended up at a positive uh, 3.7. 
So in 2022-23, that's about uh, ten million three hundred and thirty-one dollars. And as you can see through you know scanning through, I see uh, uh, there's probably an error in that 2017-18 number. Those numbers are redundant, but um, you know ranging from somewhere between um, seven point nine up to up to ten point four million dollars in in what I would consider um, our, our budget gap. So what does that yellow bar represent, um, that, that 10 million 331 for 2223? Um, it really is, um, a, 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 it represents missed opportunities. So it, it could be services that res residents have asked for um, uh, that weren't planned even or, or provided. Uh, could be protective services that weren't deployed as extensively as they may have been. Plans for new programs postponed, um, uh, God forbid, tax rate reductions uh, considered or deferred. Um, I'm not suggesting that that would be the case in our case, but but it, it does represent lost opportunities. Capital projects not started, maintenance not performed, uh, and, and staff, uh, I think it's safe to say I've observed um, uh, that some are overworked from, from a lack of resources, and um, that's borne out in discussions that I've had with HR and, uh, and some other folks. So what what did we miss? Um, Councillor Bernard uh, said, you know, where 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 did all the money go? And and I guess that's a that's a fair question. Um, in my in my experience, both in in business uh, and in other public sector bodies, particularly the, the province and with municipal affairs and finance and and crown corporations, regular budget scrutiny is an expected and a regular procedure. Um, it's done done quarterly at least. Uh, we're allocating financial resources to identified priorities. Are, are we doing that? Are we getting the best value from the s services and goods we're purchasing? Do staffing decisions reflect the best value for the city? Um, I, I, I do believe that as an administration, um, just in this budget process, uh, we haven't regularly and thor thoroughly reviewed each department's operational budgets with a view to keeping track of spending and trimming budgets where savings are, are available. We haven't had an operational plan, um, a detailed operational plan, so there's nothing really to compare it to, but we've continued to kind of do status quo budgets um, year after year with adjustments for uh, salary increases and so on, which uh, I think by default has, has served us well in terms of keeping us in, in solid financial shape, but the, the downside of that is that it really doesn't give council the tools that it needs to make important decisions about what what services, um, projects, uh, and, and programs you, you decide to move forward with. Um, so it, it, it kind of, you guys are going in um, partially blind, and, and that's, that's not fair to council uh, or, your, or your taxpayers. Um, but uh, don't go and spend all that $10 million you know, without, without a plan. Um, uh, we're, we're not su suggesting a spending spree in any way, shape, or form. We have many important projects uh, to consider, a lot of infrastructure needs. We're trying to manage growth in the city. Um, I'd like to encourage council to consider making the investments that are recommended to give staff the tools to measure, plan, and execute uh, better um, on, on, uh, on our operational plan and our strategic plan. Um, I'd ask that you give some consideration to using what have been identified. Um, there's uh, a couple of Forecast updates. Uh, we had forecasted two point uh, five point seven million dollars in a in an annual forecast for this current uh, uh, fiscal year. Sorry, that uh, slide should say twenty twenty. Uh, no, that's right. Uh, it should say twenty three twenty four forecast updates of seventy thousand and twenty four twenty five budget savings identified last week in the process where we where we uh, reached out to department heads to say um, you know we're we're having a little bit of uh, a challenge to make. The, the cuts on the new initiatives. Um, are there some areas that are soft in your in your operational budgets that we might be able to um, uh, facilitate funding some uh, new programs, uh, additional spending on on capital, or uh, uh, you know programming that we've we've cut short? Um, I really you know I. I I wasn't, um, it, it took a little time to process after our meeting on Monday in terms of where, where my head was with all this. And, and I, I just didn't feel comfortable coming back to council saying, look, um, 
we're recommending that you cut all of these things and that we can't afford um, you know, your, your two temporary positions to permanent in environment and sustainability. Um, without really have it, having looked at the looked at the expenditures on, on the operating budget, um, and I and I guess I you know fast forward to a year's time, uh, come back and and have to stare you guys in the face to say look you 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 cut um, you know these these positions uh, whether it's um, uh, a police officer or uh, a cleaner uh, for public works. Uh, whatever the whatever those those items were and and come and present you with a with a surplus forecast yet again um, as a counselor if I were in your shoes and my CFO told me that you couldn't afford to do those things um, and and I found out that the CFO hadn't gone and looked at, at the operating budget I I'd, I'd, I'd probably want to fire him so um, I, you know, while I didn't want to uh, disrupt the process to any large extent because I'm, I'm new, I, I didn't feel that I could really sit on my hands. So it was my initiative to, um, you know, and it, and it was to some extent um, uh, primed by Councillor Yankov's uh, suggestion that we we look to the departmental budgets to see if we can um, make up a little some savings, um, and uh, and I did. Um, Make make that initiative. So on Friday, um, I I did a tour around, um, spoke to the department heads that had uh, major budgets, and said, you know, is there some room, or do you have some um, uh, budget lines that that you feel are kind of soft or squishy that you feel you could uh, part with, uh, but not dramatically affect your your service delivery. Um, so I'll, I'll go through the list, but that amounted to about six hundred thousand dollars inside of uh, um, three hours or so. So um, that that was done. Um, the forecast and up and budget savings that I identified last week could fund additional spending as well. Uh, the operating surplus, if we factor in those um, budget savings and the forecast update. Uh, and all of the new initiatives sits at about uh, $162,000 surplus. Um, so they're, they're, you know, even if all the new initiatives and the um, new money for um, the uh, Extraordinary Items Fund, um, if we were to reflect those uh, potential savings in the operational budget that, that we approve on Thursday, uh, the council approves on Thursday. Um, we would still have one hundred and sixty-two thousand dollars that you 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 could redeploy to some of those positions that you think are important and maybe should have made it to the short list or um, shouldn't have been cut from 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 the short list. So um, I I wanted to uh, in in full transparency um, you know just communicate to you that. This was really my initiative, um, but also, you know, gives you the ability to consider another option. Um, uh, but clearly, uh, uh, authority rests with council in terms of the decisions that you make, and uh, we will execute on on whatever you uh, choose to move forward and, and approve on 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 Thursday. Um, that's that's all I had in terms of presentation, but happy to uh, discuss any aspect of that and and the uh, the new initiatives that uh, um, either made or did not make the list. Councilor Ramsey, thank you for that, Dan. It was very eye opening. On what did we miss? Your last paragraph, Dan, it says as uh, you know what it says. As administration, we have not regularly or thoroughly reviewed each department's operational budgets with a view. So, are we saying that we will be doing that in the future? Like by saying, for example, if you budgeted for six million dollars but you're only spending four, or or is that what I'm grasping out of that? Yes, through through the chair to, to uh, Councillor Ramsey. Certainly, that would be my wish, and, and is really a, kind of a top priority for the coming fiscal years. Is um, not just on the operational side, but on the capital projects. We want to do a better job at at, at managing projects, so we know what projects are on the table, um, how they're doing in terms of key milestones and, and getting delivered. Um, reporting regularly to uh, to council and and to taxpayers in terms of how the, how uh, the cost forecasts are going, so that um, everyone's not surprised come uh, year end or uh, to to find out that projects that they have they've approved and discussed have been uh, uh, sidetracked for some some reason. So we want to do a better job of of reporting the capital projects. 
uh, and managing assets and, and projecting the operating costs of those, those major pieces of an infrastructure. Um, but we also want to do a, a regular periodic review and, and dive into the, uh, the operating costs of, of each of the departments uh, in conjunction with, with uh, department heads and, and staff and look for efficiencies in terms of, uh, uh, you know, that we've, we've, we've found a number of different things that, that we could, you know, some of our uh, strategic plans that, that we've talked about in the capital side, um, we feel confidently that if we uh, take a public works plan and a, and a, uh, uh, a planning plan and a parks and recreation plan and, and combine those in some respects, um, it, it may result uh, not just in a better product, but also potentially some cost savings as opposed to, you know, doing doing two or three separate plans. So I, I think we'll look um, continually to, uh, and, and that's one of the benefits of having um, a strong uh, senior leadership team, is that you you have that oversight um, and, and strategic perspective that it's difficult to have when you're stuck in the weeds trying to get payroll mat or um, you know responding to to operational issues on a, on a daily basis and and we all know that it's that it's a busy spot so um, yeah that's certainly something we want to tighten up and just so, to follow so, up on so that, just oh, sorry, no, 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 go ahead but so managers beware yeah yeah and, and just to follow up on that too as I stated before like positions or jobs or projects that are not hitting the mark this year and if all of a sudden we sort of tighten up a little bit, as Dan is saying, like those hires or, or those projects could be hit next year. Am I correct? Yes. Okay, Indeed. thank you. Um, I do, Your Worship, I, I, I do want to respond to your um, comment, managers beware. Um, I, I do not consider the managers to be um, the enemy or the opposition in this. They're very much partners and in, in identifying and uh, key priorities and executing on plans. So we, our, our first priority is to engage all staff and, and to, you know, come, come forward with a uh, uh, with with a better product for for everyone and and you've got uh, you've got some pretty excellent team players nope. and we and would, we would I, I respect the staff very much and on the capital side managers and I know from experience uh, in the budgetary process they were budgeting the whole capital project you're coming in with put it over two or three years so for the staff they were only doing what they were told by previous CAO. And I have great respect for them. And I, I think that when we look at our $95 million consolidated budget, 75 to 80% is salaries, is made up, made up of salaries and, and, and benefits. So that leaves us for about $24 million or thereabouts uh, to, uh, to expend on capital projects, utilities, all those other, all those other parts of a budgetary process, and that comes down to the comes down to the staff. So when I say beware, this to me is just like we're we're telling her, or like you know when you use something like, uh, I, 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 what did we miss? Like, do staffing decisions reflect the best value for the city? That to me could have many. You know, Many de definitions, I, like some of the language we've used in here, I'm I'm a little I'm a little perturbed because I think we've been doing a great job as a city, and I told and I've, I said this before, the politics and the bureaucracy of this city administration is all about compromise and balance. We've always found that, and I think that the councillors that are elected reflect that in their own decisions and their own um, responsibilities as constituent politicians. So again, I, I just see some red flags here and I'm gonna address them as we move on. But uh, again, I, I know in the staff, in the past, everything was budgeted full out. Now we're doing it differently. So I do not blame the staff. I do not blame the managers. They were only doing what they were told. That's the fact. Councilman Tard. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, on a different note, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank uh, Dan and the staff 
um, for the due diligence that was done over the past week in, in scrutinizing the operational budgets uh, and having a closer look at them. Um, I think it really shows uh, good fiscal uh, management and responsibility to help myself as a counselor to make informed decisions on our budget as we sit here this evening and other evenings that we've been here. Um, you know, I know that uh, as elect official, you know, I, I'm not interested in going through every line item here and determining whether or not that position or initiative uh, is needed or not needed. I, that's that's by management to decide and, and upper management to determine uh, the outcomes and bring a recommendation here forward. And hopefully, uh, through the budgeting process and you know, and being fiscally responsible, whether or not we have a balanced budget is what is important. So, um, I think you know the exercise that we're you're going to get some more detail here on where we may have found some other savings that might be able to help and address some of the shortfalls. Uh, that have been identified uh, up to this point in time. So again, thank you to all the staff for that exercise, and it's certainly helpful to me. Uh, I won't speak for other counselors, but it's certainly <coughs> helpful for me in understanding and making better decisions on the budget going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Council, Council Bernard. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, and I will echo a little bit of what you said, too. I think uh, the years that I've been on council, the management has done an uh, excellent job beyond that. I mean, the, the management know their budgets, um, they know their budgets inside out, really. And, and I think I go back to the survey that was done to uh, Sharon Hill residents that the, um, the results were the highest in, in uh, the Maritimes and many municipality. So to me, that's a good indicator that uh, the staff is doing a, a fantastic job and have been doing a fantastic job. Um, and I like the fact, Dan, when you, you talk about, you know, should be team players, we should, we, we should be playing as a team, and we should be. And that includes staff, and that includes management. Uh, so, you know, you hear things like, don't be talking to the elected official. No, that to me is not, not team play. So, um, and there's lots of other things we hear. Um, and I think that will be damaging moving forward if we don't include everybody as a, as a team. So, um, the questions, Dan, it looks like the number you come up with is 562,000. 506, is that correct? Yeah, so it's the difference between the 2,055,000 and the 1,492, 1.492. Sorry, Dan. Sorry. Yeah, so two million fifty-five thousand uh, less the the one million four ninety-two. So just a little under. Uh, right. Yeah. So the extra money you found though was the seven sixty-two. You're just subtracting that from the two point five five, yeah? I'm sorry. The, the extra money that you found? Yes. Was seven hundred sixty-two thousand? Uh, six hundred and seventy thousand. Six seventy. Then what's the what's the one sixty-two? Um. I, I, I can, oh, I I can show you that off. That's that's the balance now in the operations. What yeah, that's so the 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 new initiative sheet, the one that that's on the screen now, is 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 reflective of council's direction last last Monday and the nineteenth. Right. Um, okay. The one sixty two is factoring in those uh, forecast revisions and the additional budget um, savings that were identified on Friday, um, resulting in a in a in a net. Um, uh, surplus forecast of 162,000. Okay, so basically the 600,000 is is already been implemented to nope. come out with a balance, to come out with a, a, a surplus of 162. We just did the math. We we didn't. We haven't revised any okay. uh, any any uh, okay. document other than just to identify um, you know what department those savings would be in and and what the uh, what the, what the budget lines would be. Right. So that's what I'm trying to figure. So so the so the money you've come up with. Yep. By going back to staff and asking, saying the budget's a little soft, trying to come up with some extra money. So that money has a bit earmarked for anything. Correct. Uh, so the uh, the department heads could speak specifically to to those items that that were um, moved forward for for us. But um, you, you can see on the screen there um, some of the items that uh, were were factored in to come up with that um, one hundred and sixty two thousand. So we had the the additional budget for the extraordinary, but which which isn't included in that six hundred thousand. But all of these items here um, represent uh, six hundred thousand dollars in in saving. 
So the first one, the, the fleet in the finance budget, uh, you may recall that we discussed uh, the enterprise contract and there was a, um, a fleet yep. management line yep. in, 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 uh, in finance and fiscal services. It was in a 229,000. Um, Betty and her team, uh, Stephen, I think in particular, had a look at that and uh, realized that that was a carry forward amount, that the, the the actual planned expenditure for this coming fiscal year would only be closer to 130, so that was $100,000 saving. Um, the 100,000, uh, the next one is uh, the new initiative, the, uh, the procurement, procurement help, uh, the financial anal analyst uh, consultant uh, contract was, was the, the 100,000 that uh, um, we, we we moved forward because we felt we could find that mon money uh, in in other budget lines, uh, specifically the audit and uh, and and uh, contract financial services. Um, uh, Rory uh, reviewed his IT operational budget and identified thirty six thousand five hundred uh, that he felt uh, could be um, reduced from his uh, maintenance agreements line item without uh, affecting service. Um, HR uh, has a job reclassification project um, estimated to cost about $60,000. It's due to be completed by uh, the end of 2025, um, but we had budgeted for all of that expense in, in, in this coming fiscal year. Um, Emily thought that it would be reasonable to spread that cost over two years as, as the, the project wouldn't be completed until then. Um, police uh, vehicle maintenance, um, I'll just break down. Uh, Chief McConnell indicated that um, because they had uh, eight new electric vehicles uh, being provided this year, uh, that there should be a significant savings in uh, fuel, oil, and maintenance costs um, above and beyond what, what his uh, status quo budget would be. So he reduced that uh, by, by 10,000 on the gas and oil and 23,000 on the vehicle maintenance. Um, he felt that uh, overtime could be reduced probably by 40,000 and that was reflective of the additional staffing that, that uh, we've provided to, uh, to, to, the fire department, to the police department. Um, and then there was a, a, a minor item, $2,000 in uh, law books that, that was identified. Um, the strategic projects budget line in city government, uh, we felt that uh, a $30,000 allocation there without any specific projects being identified would be a reasonable amount. Uh, so that reduced that budget by 35,000. There was a FOIP budget for um, uh, capacity building in, in freedom of information. Uh, most of the training has been done on that. So we felt that uh, cutting that in half uh, by 2,500 would be a reasonable uh, accommodation. Um, Public Works, uh, Scott indicated that he felt $90,000 could be um, readily saved from the salaries and benefits line, um, primarily through uh, seasonal staff that he felt would be very difficult to fill this coming fiscal year, um, even, if, even if he had budget. So uh, he, he felt that there was a significant saving there. Really? 90000 and and also uh, I I believe uh, Scott if he's if he's listening in could vector in but uh, I believe he I understand he had one permanent position that was on leave um, that he didn't anticipate uh, filling for this this coming fiscal year. Um, Frank had uh, four uh, uh, actually I guess five items that that he um, put forward um, as potential cost savings. I apologize, I don't have the, uh, the detail on that. Um, one of them was to, the, the, the most um, expensive was a $15,000 to um, move the uh, Simmons uh, maintenance, uh, Simmons cleaning staff, Frank, am I correct? Yeah, um, Two seasonal arena maintenance staff cleaners um, for the new Simmons, Simmons facility uh, could be reduced by 15,000, Frank said in his email. Um, it was um, normally permanent staff for six months, but uh, I'll, I'll let Frank just speak to that. Uh, yes. Uh your Worship and uh, councillors, yeah. So initially, uh, it was put in as permanent salary. We're going to hire two permanent positions for six months, but we realized let's first try it as seasonal. 
and then we'd understand, have a better idea of our demand, what we need. We're probably going to need to hire one permanent staff person and maybe one seasonal cleaner. It might not be necessarily two permanent positions. Uh, so that was for that one. So we were able to save 15 there. And then the other uh, four areas, we were able to save off insurance claims, reduce that by 5,000, uh, reduced our casual wages in programs and parks by 5,000 in each one. And then our park maintenance supplies have reduced that by 5,000. So we felt those small impacts wouldn't impact the, uh, the operations of the department. Okay. So just, just Dan, I just want to go back to, to the Department of Works and the $90,000. Uh, that, that seems like a lot of salary dollars. And I'm just wondering, was it something that you said that went on leave? Um, I, I didn't get a detailed listing from Scott, unfortunately. So Scott's um, online. Scott, right? are you still yep. there, Scott? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm can here. You, can you answer that question? Certainly, Your Worship, through to Council Bernard. So um, we we do have one employee who is on uh, long-term leave. Um, along with, there's a number, there's still, we have still have some vacancies on the permanent side. It wasn't the seasonal side, it was the permanent side of our budget where we know we're not going to be filling those positions anytime soon. How How come? Uh, just because of capacity in HR uh, would be some of the issues. Uh, the other issue is the arborist. We're still waiting for the truck to be delivered, and that's sometime hopefully later this summer. And we don't want to hire the arborist until we have their uh, truck and equipment here with them ready to go. And when do you expect that? Okay. When do you expect My the truck to arrive? I didn't quite hear that. When do you expect the, um, the truck? I believe... I believe it's sometime uh, July or August is, was the last date I heard, but I'd have to confirm that. Okay. So is there money in, the, in your budget to hire an arborist then? Or are we going to have a truck sit around? No, so we will have, we'll have the funds available for, to hire them for the remain balance for probably about six months or six, seven months for this okay. uh, upcoming okay. year. Okay. Uh, but then <sighs> next year we will be needing the full value. Okay. Yeah, that, that's okay. Yeah, no, no, just go. We'll come back, Councilor Beck. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. If he had a, no, no, no. Go ahead. No, no. Let's just keep going. If you have anything else, here. we'll come back. We'll come back to him. Yeah, just keep going. Um, so I'm, I'm just trying to make sure I understand this, Danny. So, are you saying that we have our, our men choices um, going back on page three or whatever it is of our little packet here? Am I understanding you correctly that if we go through these kind of um, soft trimming, whatever we want to call it, that we would be able to fully accommodate what is on this here without having to cut the $500,000 and still keep, am I understanding that correctly? So all these items that have the lines through them would not have to have the lines through them and we're able to, for example, get an extra police officer in there. We're able to have a parks foreman position in there. All these things will come back into the table and we'll be back to where we had hoped to, or senior leadership team had hoped to want to be before. Councillor Beck, we met last week and we're, we said, take the 1.5 and find out where you can get the positions She's come back with them. Now we're saying, okay, let's go back to what we didn't want to decide on. Like, we made a decision last week to move on. So, you know, we can keep going. I, I, I just think that... No, but I, I think what, what, was, what we decided on last week, there was $2,055,000 yeah. $2, in new initiatives. We voted to reduce that to $1.5 million. Yeah. Danny and, and everyone has gone back yep. and through soft tissue trimming or whatever we want to call it, <laughs> it's going back and they're surgically repairing the budget to say that, you know what, I think we can find money to not have to go back and cut the $500,000. Is that what I'm understanding through this process here right now? Dan? 
Yes, I mean, I'll, I'll show you the math, the, the revised forecast or the revised budget, but essentially if, if council wanted to integrate those savings into the operational budget and, and revise the forecast for that $70,000 difference, um, you could have the, five, the extra 500,000 in extraordinary items, uh, the new initiative shortlist uh, could be fully accommodated and you'd still have $162,000 to, to perhaps consider uh, environment sustainability uh, positions going to permanent or maybe a little more sidewalk or you know whatever it is um, that you would have that, that room. Thank you. Councilman Tart. Thank you, Worship. Um, I, you know, I, I understand that we made some decision last week. We did. Uh, that does not preclude the fact that we can have uh, another debate here tonight and determine whether or not there is other options. Um, I think if we look at the situation, if we are doing this at the detriment of the, the cuts that are coming here or the soft cuts that have been identified, um, then certainly we wouldn't, that probably wouldn't be something we'd be willing to move forward with. However, again, putting trust in the administration, the management team, if they have gone through and their budgets and feel very confident or comfortable that they can make these additional cuts, why would we not be considering this? I feel like you're, you're trying to say, no, we've made the decision last week, we're moving on. Uh, as a council, I don't think we have made any decisions. The budget isn't finalized yet. Yeah. I think we can make any decision we'd like no, here this evening. Let's just recall, yeah. we, there was a vote there were three that voted against vote going for no, no. There was there, there was a straw vote. Yeah. Well, that, that's what I read. Okay, three said to keep with the two million. The the, the majority said go to the one point five. Okay. They come back with the one point five, and that's where we so, are. At. So, so if you're if, saying if we're bound to that, if we're no, bound no, to if, that, if, then if let's just throw this presentation out right now and move no, on. And be no, 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 council. I'm not saying throw. If council wants to reverse what we decided last week. Then we'll have a vote, put a resolution on the floor to say. But I think that's what Councillor Beck was just saying, and you said, no, we made the decision last week. That's we're right. Moving on. You but said if, we're moving if, on. if you wish to change it, he can move it to say, I want to go back to the two million. You second it, we'll have a vote, straw a vote. And if the majority says two million, we go back to two million. That's, that's how council works. Okay, I didn't know we were vote, officially voting on uh, things then. Yeah. So he's saying, go back to the two million. You second it? Well, Yes, I will second it. Okay. I, I wanted to stay with the two million. To okay, start so with the it. two million is back on the floor. Uh, so it, there's a, some discussion, Councillor Bernard. Yeah, I think it, it's, it's wow. I mean, I wish I had had all this stuff before. I mean, there's a lot of information we get tonight. Uh, it'd be nice to have a little bit of time to go over this. Um, the other night, and, and things do change from the other night, because what happens was when we thought the budget was approved, they went ahead and found some some more money. So, so that changes everything tonight. Um, but I just got to get ahead around because there was a lot of capital projects that we ended up cutting that we were looking to do. But you know, so, so that was the first thing we did. So how much, you know, I, I guess some of the things that concern me and, and, and you know, tonight the, the news has, has been pretty good. But I mean, we got, as you know, we talked about the soccer fields. The, the baseball fields, the rugby fields, we're behind in all of them. We're talking about uh, building a new uh, arena or, or renovating East Link. We, we know we got carried with the, uh, the replacement, uh, what do you call it? What? Replacement chiller for the, ne the next couple of years in both ranks. So it's, so it's going to be up to four or five million dollars. I just want to make sure that, you know, within, within a couple of years, Dan, this seemed, this seemed to be a much better presentation tonight, I have to say. Um, I just want to be confident that, because early on it was $2 million, go do all the hiring what? And I mean, in one year, $2 million, you wonder to yourself, it's not going to be too long before you're raising taxes or looking for more money, because that's just year one. I think there's like 18 or 20 people that we wanted to hire this year and another 18 or 19 next year. I don't know where you're going to put them. So there was a lot of concerns that we had about the amount of money being spent. And I think there was nothing in Extraordinary. I think we were looking to put some more money in Extraordinary. So we did that. So now Extraordinary, I believe, is still at $1.5 million, Dan, because we didn't yes. even move any of this. Yep. So um, yeah, so it, you know, we're, in a, we're in a better financial position. Um, the only question that I would have is, is there any capital projects that we need to look at that we haven't, that we backed out? 
That's or, right. Or, you know, I understand there's a presentation coming from, from East Link. There's also East Link, and then there was also the issue of sidewalks, yeah. active transportation pathways, multi-use paved pathways. That was zero, then we moved it up to right. two, then we moved it up to three, then we looked at pavement, it was at 2.5, we added 1.2. So it's, it's, it's a very fluid uh, exercise that we're going through here. So if you wish, there's two counselors, Beck and, and Matard are saying, put it back up to two million, and therefore, as for these other capital projects that we want to enhance, I don't know if they're still on the table. Well, I'll, I, I, I guess you were, I still have concerns over the city solicitor, what we're doing there. I mean, personally, I, 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 and I'm just going back from what was done a few years ago when they did some research into it, because um, I think that's going to end up costing us more. Um, so to me, I would leave that out. Um, and I, I know, I know Elmer's not going to like this, but the director of community services, I've always had a problem with another director. I've always said, you know, we, we've had three directors in the past after we amalgamated. We had three CAOs from three different municipalities that they were responsible for. Um, once they retired, we, we didn't rehire, so that's been about 15 years. So Eleanor and the previous one before her needed help, so we had a DCAO, which we changed that now to a director. But then on top of that, we've hired a second director. And I guess, it, you know, it was asked, did you want it to me? Is it, that's enough for now. I, don't, I, I guess it, I, I haven't seen anything to sell me. I, I haven't seen any cost analysis. I haven't seen any needs except for Eleanor saying this is what she needs. But I don't see, I just don't see the need yet. Okay. So that, you know, that, that's hard for me to, to say yes to. It's hard, and the city solicitor is hard for me to say yes to. So... But the other stuff, I, you know, I, I can be, I, 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 I'd be okay with it. Councilor Beck. <clears throat> so I, I guess when we were going down, one of the things we said about the capital budget was that the capital budget had to be done before we do the operational budget, right? So that was articulated here from multiple people that we had to get that done first because that impacted yep. our ability to finance the operational budget. So. Yep. You know, going back now, I, I think is... It's possible. It, anything's possible. Anything's possible. possible. I mean, that's we that's we what we're doing right here anything. tonight. Anything's possible. Right. So, uh, and... Um, but, you know, I think, I think really what Danny has identified here tonight is that the modeling for per financial predictions has been askew in the last... Basically, for lack of a better word, has... We've, we, we haven't, we forecasted major deficits, we've ended up with significant surpluses. That's been a multi, that's been a year over year with those yellow figures being quite demonstrable. So I think as a go forward, we're going to get better at, hopefully, through the leadership of the new department, uh, director of finance and the team that, you know, now that Betty settled in, Danny settled in, the owner settled in, I think we'll have a better idea as to how we go about so we can provide the best services, so that we can best utilize the tax revenue that we're collecting on an annual basis. So in looking at where we are right now, we've, we've hired Eleanor to, be, to oversee the city court. And through all these, as I said earlier, death by a thousand cuts, has identified that this is what we need in this $2,055,000 new initiative. We've had discussions here about do we accept it as a package or do we go line by line? Like, we're, which, which lane are we going down here with this? Like, are we going to go because now we're, you know, I mean, I've, I was even guilty of it myself. I said, why don't we throw 15000 back into the... You know, and then and Councillor Bernard was looking to get the environment and sustainability piece. So, which which lane are we going down with this? Are we going line by line, or we're we just saying, listen, we're going to take the two million, we're going to accept uh, senior leadership's direction, and we're going to they're going to trim money in order to allow that two million to get back up to what it currently was. So, I think. Maybe the motion, maybe I'm, my motion might have been premature, and maybe we're still in the discussion <laughs> stage. 
And I'm okay with retracting it if we can come up with a better understanding here. If that's if that's agreeable to people, I don't I don't necessarily feel that maybe the motion has to stay. Maybe we have to have further discussion before we go down and make an, an emotion on it because I don't I'm not sure we're understanding which way we're actually going here. So can I retract my motion there, Your Worship? Retract anything? Because this is just a straw vote. Okay, no I'm, gonna no retract, official, I'm gonna retract my motion if that's okay. There's no, the there's no official, tra official tracking. Okay, it. thank you. Councillor Ramsey. Thank you, uh, and once again, Dan, thanks. Um, so you're saying when you went back to all the departments and they found ways they can cut a little bit. So that would give us enough to boost it up to the the two million as it was first requested. Does that fill all these positions that were scratched out? Am, am I reading that right? Um, through the chair to Councillor uh, Ramsey, um, if if that was Council's direction to you know to use those savings that were identified to factor that into the the operational budget and to move forward with all the new initiatives, is, if that was your direction. Um, our math indicates that we would be able to do that, put a half a million in extraordinary items additional to get uh, get the 1.5 and still end up with a with a small surplus forecast of 162,000. So uh, yes, but certainly there, there would be other options available to council. Um, you could do some or all of the new initiatives. You could move uh, move on a couple of uh, key um, key things that didn't make it, or or expand some uh, some budget line that um, that that you felt was a little little shy on. Those those are council's decisions. But I I, I did want to. I, I felt that it was really my responsibility to bring this forward as an option for you to consider. Because if I didn't, I, 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 I would have felt that it wasn't really being fair to, to council. So um, it, it's entirely in your jurisdiction to make whatever decision you, you choose to. But I, I wanted to be transparent and, and let you know that given the fact that we were able to identify these uh, uh, savings in the budget, that, that you, you could make decision not to make those cuts on the new initiatives, uh, provide for the additional um, extraordinary items and, and and still be okay on side with uh, with the MJ. Yeah, and I and I thank you for that, and I understand that, uh, and I'm uh, I'm in full agreement as you say. You like, and I liked it when you first started months ago when you said your projects are not going to be done this year. Well, you know we can only budget for so much. <clears throat> the only thing that I have uh, problems with is the city solicitor. I brought that up numerous times. <clears throat> They say we're saving 157,000. I don't know. It's just the proof got to be in the pudding for that, I guess. It'd just be another person that we got to find an office for here at this time because Cox and Palmer or whoever our legal system is is still going to be on retainer. And we will be going with them with a lot of questions because this one guy is not, or one person, the new lawyer, is not going to look after everything. I don't think he's going to have the answers for everything. So I, I would like to, if it was possible, to park that for one more year and see where that's going. And that's just my personal opinion. Thank you. Council Patard. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Dan, I, I should have asked a question when I was speaking earlier. Uh, I guess despite the, you know, trying to find this $500,000 to get these uh, number of initiatives, the exercise that you embarked on with the management team, uh, you know, and looking at some of this soft trimming, uh, do we feel that that in itself was a worthwhile exercise, one that would continue into the future, obviously? Um, and then second to that is, you know, uh, these additional cuts, are they putting any stress at all onto the departments? Or do we feel very confident that this would have been something we would, as a normal practice, we do anyways, and it could have amounted to us at the very start of this, and we would never really been debating it. If we're debating it seems like because we're we're trying to tie it back to something that's very controversial, which is the, the the initiatives. But had this exercise been maybe done right from the start of all of this, it may never have seen it, and it may have been, uh, you know, trimmed just as part of everyday uh, fiscal management that you're doing with your teams and your management team. So I'm wondering now that it's kind of brought to the surface, uh, is one I want to know is this is this putting additional stress on all of these departments to do this exercise, or do you feel confident that? This is an exercise that actually kind of 
uncovered something that you know likely should be done um, annually anyhow. Uh, and then second to that is, um, um, is that going to continue year over year? Like it just in kind of having that uh, little bit of scrutiny onto the operational budgets. Thank you. Thank you, uh, through the chair to the councillor. Um, certainly, in in the discussions uh, on Friday with department heads, um, no one came to me to say, uh, you know, look, this we we just don't have that to cut. If we do, we're going to be in in deep trouble on on one thing or another. Um, you know, I I think. The budget is a plan, and sometimes circumstances change. You know, if a, you know, we have a, a budget for snow removal, if we had a, a snowmageddon, you know, that's not going to do uh, uh, again. So, you know, we can't say for certain that um, there won't be pressures come. Um, but I guess um, I, I trust in the department heads that these are initiatives uh, or, or uh, savings that have been identified that they're that they're comfortable with, um, uh, that that they feel they have enough room to to uh, put a little bit of pressure on. Perhaps uh, you know it, it always takes a little bit of extra work to save a few bucks. But um, I didn't get the sense from any of the managers that these were um, extraordinary uh, asks. Council Bernard, Council McLaren, Council Yank, Captain Mary Yeah, just a quick question, Dan. I'm just wondering um, when we when we say we can when we say we can fulfill the new initiative list, is, is that the list that you handed to us with the 24, or is that the first list that we had 37 on it, 39 on it? Well, the uh, the the math that I did was uh, with 162,000 was the, the what I call the short list, so that two million fifty-five thousand. Um, the Confederation Center initiative is not going forward, so that's kind of off the table uh, because we've made other provisions for that. We have other other plans um, for our uh, culture partners there. Um, Wait a second. Now, are you talking about the the? The, two, the, grant? the two hundred thousand grant right. for the Confed Center because we, we we put some money in the capital budget for right. for yeah. a, a different um, slant on that on that on supporting the center. Um, so is that is that still in? No, the that's capital? that's that's out of. It's still in the capital, but there's nothing yeah. that if we were to follow with these the, the cuts to one one point five that 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 is out. But we we kind of made that decision last Monday anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to put that in then, really. That two hundred thousand. In, well, you, you I, I, I wouldn't suggest that you that you would put it in. So, if you there, there's three hundred and sixty thousand dollars roughly that's been cut if you if you exclude the um, Confederation Center because we had kind of already made that decision to to go a different uh, yeah, direction. Right. Okay, so I'm just a little confused. So when we made that decision to go a different route, did, did you just say that that's off the table now? Well, it, it, we wouldn't budget for it operationally if we're pursuing the other right. option, the, the right. capital option. Right. Okay, I so, thought you said that was off so, the table. So, so we, we probably wouldn't, you know, even if we did get all the new initiatives uh, approved, we wouldn't recommend that you put another $200,000 on the table for Confederation Center because we we have provided a million dollars in the capital budget for, right. for this okay. coming year. So that's still, yep. that's still good then? Yeah. Okay. I thought you said okay. We, and we won't know. Uh, we won't have a lot of feedback on that until uh, later in April, um, when when our partners have a chance to deliberate at, at, with our governance people. Yeah. So, Councilor McLear. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mayor Brown. Um, yeah. I, I'd just like to um, uh, kind of propose, and I know uh, we, uh, you know, with with the last meeting, we talked about. Uh, well, we, we bust 1.5 uh, for new initiatives and for CAO and the team to identify how they wanted to, um, you know, allocate uh, allocate that. And then, you know, um, Danny, um, in his role, um, you know, since he's since he's been here at the city, and this is certainly my experience or opinion. I mean, I think he's uh, I think he's done kind of yeoman's work. He's uh, brought some. Um, um, some clarity and uh, around our budgeting process kind of going forward and uh, I, I certainly understand the mayor's remarks too in terms of past budgeting part departments and and heads were only doing what they were requested to do by probably previous CAO, CAOs at the time and, and that's and that's fine but I think with with uh, where we are here now with the decision we got to make and we're, we're running out of time in terms of trying to meet the deadline of uh, having this within the period of being prepared um, 
if uh, what we didn't know when we last ended the last meeting was that Danny, which he said to his own, own initiative, to went back and, and, and made uh, discussions with the department heads and, and these savings got found. So there were $600,000 that we didn't know that we had to deal with, uh, you, know, you know, at our last meeting. So um, what I'd like to propose is, and, and uh, anyway, just this kind of before that, and I know Councillor Bernard, some of your remarks in terms of going forward, I, I, and I, I sure share the same concerns with, you know, the big capital needs that the city have uh, uh, coming forward. They're, um, you know, you know, they're huge, but um, uh, we, um, we 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 have to deal with what we have in front of us here tonight in this budget in this short window. And um, I'm hoping that uh, you know on those bigger projects, who knows where that what that's going to look like going forward. Um, again, we keep talking about, and, and I think there is going to be some uh, discussion soon with the province on the funding formula. And uh, hopefully, before year's end, we're going to know what that's going to look like, good, bad, or indifferent. So back to this you're evening and what's in front of us here. You got a proposal. Uh, you got I, a proposal. Proposal I'd like to you know make a resolution that uh, the savings that have been identified, you know we, we put back in the the new initiatives, yeah. approve it as a package as requested, uh, let the CAO and staff decide how that uh, how that is you know is fully funded if it's all new initiatives this year or, or some or some kind of you know combination, but uh, uh, trusting uh, you know them with their. Uh, with their, their knowledge and insight and their direction, you know, they're, they're paid good money to make these decisions and um, let's, uh, let's yep. um, make a decision. You know, may, uh, put that, uh, I'd like to put that on the floor as a resolution if somebody wants to yep. second it and Councilman see Chair. where we get to it. Yep. Okay. Councilor, uh, Deputy Mayor Yankoff. Um, thank you, Worship. And just a, just a point of um, clarity, I guess. Um, somebody had mentioned the city solicitor, and I just wanted to point out that um, it's there's no there's no expense to that because there's a it's either going to be spent on a staff person or that extra money just stays within the city legal budget already. So that that's that's you can see that there's no operating cost there because that's either going to be. Um, taken away from the overall budget from the from the legal team, or it's going to be put into here. So whether or not they proceed with the city solicitor, it's it's it it's not it's not it's not a recommended net operating cost. Yep. It's 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 blank. So it's, yep. it's cost yep. neutral. Yep. Yes, yep. Toyo. Yeah, I wanted to get an update on the. Uh, I'm hearing talk here, but I wasn't here. I wasn't well at the last meeting with regards to Confederation Center. So what was the financial commitment made to the uh, Confederation Center? And I understand now that was brought under capital? Uh, th through your worship uh, to Councillor Twill. So there has been no commitment made, um, but we did identify a, a potential opportunity, which um, I can speak to you about after the meeting, just to give you a little bit of background. But it is very much uh, an idea that has to be uh, vetted by uh, the Confederation Centre, and, and then if they were agreeable, it would be brought back to Council for further uh, consideration. But we did feel that it was a, a, a viable option to support uh, the Confederation Centre of the Arts that, that might bring, also bring value to the City of Charlottetown. So uh, something that perhaps we, we could take offline after the meeting. Councilor Bernard. Thank you. Um, I'm just wondering, um, is Scott still on the line? Scott Adams? Yes, I'm still here. I'm just wondering, Scott, the electrician that was in the new initiatives, um, if we hired our own, would that position would that pay for itself? Because of all the work, I think uh, I was led to, led to believe. I, you see, Hanson's doing all our Christmas uh, lighting and, and all the lighting that they do. If we had our own, would that pay for itself and save money? Uh, your worship, through to Councillor uh, uh, Councillor Bernard. Um, yes, long term it would. Um, the only the only thing would be like when you look at Christmas lights. 
street. Now we require a boom truck to get up there. That would be an additional capital expense. So I would say we're, we're okay with delaying that for another year to look at how can we cost that all out and, and, and afford that. I thought you had a boom truck coming. Uh, we have one for the Arborist crew, so that's a long reach one, particularly for trees, um, not not in particular for electrical typical work. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, so the only thing uh, I would like to see in this list is the two two environmental staff that are already working for twenty thousand dollars. They become permanent. You so. go with the two million. They go back in. Yeah. Right. I just, want to be clear. Just, I just want to be clear on that. Dan, what happens? Um, the 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 two million fifty five thousand would would not include the those two positions, but certainly if you wanted to amend the resolution to include those or something else, that that that, that yeah. could certainly be. No, it's just it's just not in that number. So I I just wanted to be clear yeah. that, that that it's not on that list. So, um, but as I said, their council does have full discretion to say you know no we're sticking with the one point five and leave it as is. You can uh, take the savings that have been identified, factor them into the budget, and spend as you wish. Um, entirely your choice. Okay. I, mean, I'll, 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 I guess for me, um, with, with, with uh, John's, the chair's recommendation, I think for me, I could be okay with most of the stuff as long as those two, I mean, it's a no-brainer, it's $20,000. Yeah. Um, the only thing, I just don't know about the city solicitor. I think that's going to end up costing us more. I think that should come out. And uh, like I guess I, I, I'm a director of community services. I'm just, I'm just not there yet. Yeah. I'm just not there yet. Yeah. But well, other, no, than but that, other than that, I'm, I'm, I, I'd be good. Okay. I, I just go back to Councilor Matard. He said we're going to deal with this as one package, right? So we can't be amending it. Like, we weren't going line by line. So either we go with what we decided that we decided last year, 1.5, and then yeah, reduce the number, or go back to what was on the list last week before we went to 1.5. Councilman Tart. Right. Thank you. Well, I don't know. Maybe we need some clarity. Of course, I said that uh, in the way of which I was not interested in uh, that exercise of going through that. I felt very. I know you strongly. didn't vote for it. Pardon me? You didn't vote for it. The 1.5, you voted against it. Yes, yes. Yeah, so but I'm saying know that. going through line by line. I said last week or that I felt very strongly that the recommendations that were put forward by the administrative staff on thing, uh, you know, and we would not, or me, I, I don't feel I'm in a position to sit here and go line by line determining what this city needs and doesn't need based on something. Uh, I think the decisions have been made by management up to the CAO, and we've got a package in front of us here, and uh, that is what, and we're basing it on the financials and being fiscally responsible, and that's what I'm debating here is uh, whether or not we can afford these initiatives or not afford them. What's on the initiative list, I trust fully that that information has been vetted through the channels within the administration to bring forward to council. That was my thing. So I, I feel like we're saying, Justin said, we're not allowed to do anything. No, 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 line. no, no. Again, to clarify. But if you want we're, me to have No, no, but to clarify, we're not go. going through line by line. That's, we're not going line by line like the lawyer and so forth. We're going with the full package, whether we go with last week's or this week's with the 1.5. So are you so empowering me to make that decision? You, that's the, well, the resolution that was moved by Councillor McAleer. Okay. And seconded by you was to go back to last year's list, uh, last week's list, Councilor Bernard. Okay. Or Councilor Beck. Still doesn't. <laughs> I'm going back to my previous point. Which lane are we in here? Where? Line by line or package? The package. Well, no, but that's not what the discussion's going well, on. Well, the if discussion you start, is going on, on, I, because what's happened here, Your Worship, right, is. We made, we had a vote last week. Danny came back with new information that has changed the lens on our discussion. Yep. So really, in my mind, last week's vote right now for me is 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 irrelevant. So you want to go line of the by line? Information that's come to light because <clears throat> Danny, through the work with the managers, has found um, areas 600. to be trimmed 
that we don't really have to look at that $500,000 anymore. So then it comes back now to looking at our package and saying, what I'm hearing in the discussion here tonight is there's still some questions about <coughs> certain issues. So I think it almost comes back to a, we, we kind of forego that package discussion, whole package, full meal deal, whatever we want to call it. Okay. And that we kind of look at, I think there's, what I'm hearing from the discussion is there's general consensus that a lot of these things are worth moving forward. If we can have the money to accommodate them. Okay. And so, support the or CAO and the senior administrative team in the best manner possible. But there's still a couple of outstanding issues that people are uncomfortable with. Yeah. And I, I'm I'm gonna speak because I would have been one who would have spoke would have supported the city solicitor issue before. I'm okay with looking at that for another year because we have had extraordinary expenses in the past. We can continue on. For me, that's not a that's not a position. I think we can look at that and we can analyze it for this year. We can look at the costs that we have, compare it. We know that right now we're we're projecting uh, four hundred thousand less one hundred and fifty seven, so two hundred and forty three thousand dollars roughly in external legal fees. Well, let's look at it and see what we get this year in terms of external legal fees, in what hopefully is a bit more of a normal year. Then we come back and we re revisit that. And we look at it and say, okay, you know what? Uh, maybe it's worth a while to get a solicitor. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm perfectly fine. Whereas I and I would have been one that supported that before. So I guess there are still a few individual items. I think for the by and large, if I'm reading the room correctly here or listening to what people are saying, we're general agreement. There's a couple items in this page three that we have to ascertain as to whether we want to support them or not. Okay, so, so again, to clarify, do you want to, and Councillor Tweel mentioned at the start, he didn't agree with the Director of Community Service. Yeah. So do we start there? Do we start because he, he just, he made that point. So do we start there? So did Councillor, <laughs> no, no, you, like if you're going to go through the list, you can't cherry pick. We're cherry picking. So do we go, do we go with what Councillor Tweel said at the first? And then do we go down to the city solicitor? Then do we go to the IT support technician? Do we go, I, I, I want direction. Okay. We, so we're, we're, only, we're only talking, really, if, if, we're, if I'm understanding, there's not going to be a lot of vote, a lot of discussion on majority of these topics. Well, let's okay. vote. So I don't think we, I think we've had enough discussion through presentations We've absorbed our own per professional or personal perspective. And maybe if it does come down to a vote, maybe we have yeah. to say where, where we do where we yeah. do like Councilor Twill. Mike's Mike's hot. Um, you know, I can recall doing many budgets where we've gone through line items. And we either stayed with the recommendation, recommendations, or we just we just deleted them, subtracted them. So I don't know when we start this process. What time was it? Five Say five o'clock. Yeah. No, so five. We didn't start at five. Five thirty. Quarter to Say six. Say five thirty, yeah. and it's now well, it's quarter to ten. So quarter to eight. I'm sorry, quarter to eight. Could be a quarter to ten by the time we're out of here. Um, we get it by so, you know, like I said right from the beginning, are we starting at the top? No, we're going to do the package, and then we find out later we're going to add another five hundred thousand. We're going to get it up to two million. You know, folks, it's 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 amazing, really, because it's it's great to say, you know, we have these forecasts and we're going to spend two million dollars and we're going to find a million late, later over here and another few thousand over here. We, we went through, we went through um, you know, the capital projects. And to my mind, that was one of the most frustrating exercises I've ever gone through in my time here at City Hall. I left here that night. I was livid, just livid, at the recommendations that come in from, 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 
from senior management. And I'll tell you what, I haven't changed. The temperature hasn't gone down. I was just livid because we bring projects forward and then staff says, oh no, we, we don't need to do that. We're just going to cut it. You know, Councillor Blair alluded to it earlier that you know, we're here to represent our constituents. So it's great to say we're, we're going we're to add $2 million, we're going to add staff, we're going to do this, and we're going to do that. And, and, and yet, what do we have to show forth to the community? And in some cases, zero. Just a zero. Taxpayers' money, we're spending all this money in-house, and we could say, well, it's to, to be able to, 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 to better produce better services and Better, better, better capital projects and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. I, I think it worked out not too bad previously. Has it been perfect? No. Nothing's perfect. Is this perfect? No. I appreciate the, the efforts. I mean, we're, there's different strategies, different plans of actions and, and, and methodologies that can be put in place to try to arrive at, at, the, you know, at the, end, the end goal of, of where we want to be as a city. But... But, but, you know, I, I have never, like, I mean, I've just never seen anything like it. And we can add another 500,000, we can add another 5 million, knock yourself out. But in terms of what I believe, which should be produced to the community, two different things. Okay, what we're doing in-house here and what's being provided to the community, two different things. Make no mistake about it. So... We can stay here, here Mr. Mayor, till 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock. I mean, what's important to me is the initiatives that we brought forward. What I see is council reacting to what management wants, yeah. okay. whether it's capital or whether it's operational. That, that's what's happened here. Yeah. Okay? Before, it used to come back to the committee, standing, the respective standing committees, they would have a meeting, so, okay, let's look at it. And then, and then come back to council. That did not happen here. That did not happen. Okay. We are reacting to, and this is not a criticism, these are facts. We are reacting to management's recommendations. With all due respect to management, you don't knock on doors. Okay? You don't take the phone calls. You're not, you're not addressing the concerns from the community saying, Where's our ball diamond, or where's our outdoor rink, or whatever the case may be? You don't have to face the constituents. We do. And that's why I'm so frustrated with the, this entire process. You know, I mean, to turn around and say here tonight, oh, we'll just add another 500,000. Look, you think we hit the lottery. Thank you, Councilor. So, so, Mr. Mayor. Yep. You know, I asked from the start, are we going to go down line by line? You said, no. No, because I was just, told. You said, you said, yeah. and I said you. It so it's just My understanding is so. So it's basically take it or leave it. Yeah, no, right? back to, I guess, I, I can't. I, I don't know. I mean. Let's, let's, so, go, to the, let's go to the uh, chair of uh, uh, <coughs> the, uh, finance because, uh, <laughs> I, again, Councilor Tweel, as I started off, my direction from last week was that we didn't want to <laughs> cherry pick. This week we're going to look 1.5 and then just take the list as is. But now we're, I'm, I'm hearing different, different, uh, different uh, uh, deviations from what, uh, what we, I thought we decided on. But things change. Councilor McAleer, can we? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Brown. Um, uh, I'd like to take uh, another stab at uh, uh, a resolution on this to see if it, uh, it might work. Um, again, the, yeah, the savings that have been identified by uh, Danny uh, and his uh, and his team, six hundred thousand or whatever, if you will, put that back in to the uh, to the new initiative ask. Um, that takes it up to the or for the most part to balance it out at their request of the two point five two million fifty five thousand, um, and then um, uh, with the uh, with the uh, with the um, maybe uh, the amendment or the uh, to take out the park the solicitor thing for a year and the uh, and of Councillor Bernard um, on the uh John uh, Councillor McLeod we're good like 
I, again, I'm trying to figure out, if we're going back line, line, by, line by line, just like Councillor Tweel asked, let's go back. Go, start right at the director and go down. Like, All right. And like, you know, just take it as is. Yeah, just take it or leave it. That's, that's, that's my understanding. Let's... Let's just take it or leave it. We got the one point one point five. You add five hundred on it. Well, if that's if that's the case, uh, you've already I, I, put I, the resolution I, on the floor. We can okay, vote on it. No, well, I'll, I'll I'll amend the resolution then, if I could. I'd put the resolution that the the six hundred or whatever has been found in savings by uh, Danny and his yeah. uh, team as CFO, Going that back. it be applied to what we have in front of us here, and. Um, Take it as take it as a package. I okay. mean, the uh, CAO and and staff are uh, the qualified people, you know, to make this list. Um, if we have to go through line by outline, so no. be it. But no. it's not my choice or not my recommendation. Thank you. Okay. Question. Question. Questions called. Okay. Questions okay. called. What, what, what's the so package? it's to, his resolution, uh, Councillor McAleer's resolution, second by Councillor Bernard Matard, is to take that six hundred and apply it to what we looked at last week, the whole list, that's what we're voting on, the list. We're not going through cherry picking. I'm not doing that. Okay, the, the one last, week? last week. Okay, what about changes we want to make to that list? If you start making changes, then the whole list is open. Yeah, the whole list is open. Can last week's list get put up here so we can see it? The last week, it should be in your package. Let's just have the problems on the TV yeah. there right now. Yeah. Questions called? Okay. Yeah. All those in favor of Councillor McAleer and Councillor Matert's resolution, raise your hand. Can I speak on it? Oh, I thought we were speaking on it. You just put the resolution question, on the floor. Question was called. Okay, we'll take back the question. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I, and I think I'm going to go along with what Councillor Beck said, too. This is not going to take long. Just go through yes or no. Councilor, as, as, e at each one, we, this is what we've done every year. I know, you go through but with the money I thought we agreed last week not to do it. You might as well know what council wants. You might as well know what council wants. The resolution's on the floor. They added another five, six hundred thousand. That's what's on the floor. Okay. Okay. So, I do a friendly do, amendment. I wanted to do I'd, that to start. I'll do a, no dice. I'll do a friendly amendment. What's friendly that, amendment? Friendly amendment is, is those two staff become permanent for twenty thousand dollars. Well, the mover and the seconder has to agree to that. No, you're not cherry picking. You're saying no, so it's not no friendly amendment. Okay, resolution. Who's all in favor of raising the going back to last week's list? Put up your hand. Going back to last week's list. Yep, the two million plus. The all the list. Take out the 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 marked up sheet. Everything that was discussed last week. Director, city solicitor, all the other positions. All those in favor. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. In favor? Okay. Those against? Okay. So we're back to 1.6. No. no. Yeah, that's no, what we're, we're back to. No, we're not. No. What? That was the resolution. Yeah. The resolution was to go from 1.6 to 2, 2 plus. We said no to it, correct? That was, it was 5 to 4. That's what I saw. 5 to 4. Okay. So the 1.6 is what we go with, the list that's there. Okay, I'll put a resolution on the floor that we go with 2.76 into new initiatives. And that adds the two support staff for environment and sustainability. And do we want to second that? Second that. Second there that. You go. Okay, so resolution's up. We need just second that. Yeah, just, do, 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 can you just use your mic there, Councilor? I just, just want to clarification. We, we just agreed to 1.6. Now Councilor Bernard's asking for Two point something or just two million seventy six thousand, and the two support staff from environment are added okay. to the list. That's sure. the other twenty thousand. Well, okay. Understood. Understood. Okay, yeah. Councillor Beck. Yeah, I and again, I if we go back, that would imply that we're taking in the city solicitor in this too. Am I correct? No, I'd rather not. If, so we're adopting. So just so we understand here, so. If, if we're going with this, we're saying 
We're taking all those items that comprise two million fifty-five thousand dollars plus the conversion of those positions to permanent. So that means that we're taking in the city solicitor position okay. with this. Does, does he have a seconder? Okay, so but Just but he hasn't he hasn't. Just you moved it. Yeah, I moved. Okay, I'll se I'll second it if you're to get the or to Council get the McKinney. discussion going. Yeah. I'll second it. No, Council McKinney, keep going, keep going. And Council Trevor McKinnon seconded. seconded. Keep going. He seconded. Yeah. I keep going. Okay. <coughs> oh, he's not I'm done not, yet. He just, he's still talking. Done. Holy jeez. I'm not done discussing. Oh, sorry, Norm. Oh. Kind <laughs> <laughs> of rude of you there, big fella. Nope, nope. I'm, I'm in favor of, of the general list here. I'm just kind of going back to the discussion that we had about the solicitor. Put a friendly amendment on. It takes the solicitor. So, if I could make a friendly amendment yeah. that we mm -hmm. remove the city solicitor and yeah. we keep, and that. that we and that we take the city solicitor out, yeah. we look at our expenses for this year and decide whether it's worth our while to invest in yeah. a solicitor long term. Yeah. Okay, okay, just Council Twill. So the mover, Council Bernard, do you agree to that? Well, well, we're back to... No, 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 the friendly amendment, just let's... Councilor Bernard, Sorry. do you agree to the friendly amendment? I do. Seconder? So the friendly amend amendment is part of the resolution to take the city solicitor out and to add two environment, environment sustainability, sustainability positions, that. make them permanent. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Councilor Twill, are you... You're done, Councilor Beck? Good. Here it is, folks. Here's the latest from Broadcast News. We're now back to cherry picking. That's exactly what we've done. Um, two and a half hours, and we're, we're on to uh, cherry picking. After, when we made an agreement, or I was told by the mayor that there was no cherry picking, we were going to vote on a package. Okay? So you can, yes, you can add an amendment, and, and you can do all those things. But no consistency. No consistency in the process. Okay? No consistency whatsoever, no predictability. You can argue the merits of uh, in-house solicitor. I mean, we have in-house uh, engineers. We still go outside for engineering work, if you want to go that route. I mean, you can argue this all day long. Um, but, but you said, you said, yep. we're doing a package. Yep. So, so now we're back to cherry picking. Yep. Th Let's have the vote. Okay. Oh, no. Deputy Mayor Yankov. I know. He, 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 go. Thanks. So can I friendly amendment the friendly amendment? No. <laughs> no. 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 Remove. I like okay, the friendly well, amendment. Well, I just, I just want to point out that, that we can't be, I don't agree with cherry picking agree. some of the items on here. <coughs> and I always go back to that, that term I use. I won't use it tonight, but we can't be a little bit pregnant here. Like we're either going to look at the whole list or not. And the city solicitor is, is an in and an out. So if the senior administrative staff decides they don't, if they want to park that for a year, let them decide that because it's still the same $157,000. It's either going to go to Cox and Palmer or it's going to go here. So I, anyways, that. Councillor Beck. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. But I, I, what happened with the, we're back into a bit of cherry picking because we defeated the original motion. So that opened. Councillor Bernard put the motion on the floor. Let's take this plus add on. So we are effectively cherry picking. There we are. Right. So we're we're back. We're we're back. It's it's not just that and nothing but. Okay. So we voted so, against it. But we did so it did get it. voted on yeah. to to not go with that before. So that's how that's how we ended up back into the situation okay. that we're at. I really don't. I'm really not married to the solicitor or not. And really, if, if they decide that, you know what, they, they don't want to entertain it this year, let's go ahead. But it's in there if you, if you so choose. 
I just think that based on the discussion here tonight, there's still some questions as to whether we should have it or not. I'm okay approving it as 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 is, and if senior senior leadership team deems that it's in their best interest to do that, I just think hearing from here, or at least what I was hearing tonight, is that there is an appetite to say, okay, let's look at what this year brings. Yeah. See if there is a bit of normalcy, and is it something that we can live or live with or live without? I am not dying in that hill in the interest of moving along. Um, if that's the case, we can I can we we can go ahead and vote on this as is with Councillor Bernard's uh, addition on to to it. I just think it's important to understand that there was, from what I was hearing tonight, that there was a. Um, appetite for reviewing that. Yeah. So just remember, Council, if you vote for this amendment, just as Council Tweel said, it's wide open. We'll go right back to the list oh, yeah. and cherry pick. That's that's what's going to happen. So, yeah, we're anyways, gonna, we're going to rock and roll. Yeah. I can guarantee you. Council we'll Bernard, roll tonight. wrap it up. Uh, your, your Worship, um, Council does have his discretion in how he wants to deal with it. I mean, to, to, to say it's all or nothing, I mean, um, I agree with Councillor Beck, the city solicitor, just go one year, wait and see. You can do this next year. I, I don't, you know, personally, for, I'm just going from the report that was done a number of years ago that was saying we wouldn't say. So I don't think there's anything wrong with waiting for another year on the city solicitor. As far as cherry picking, to me, it's common sense. You want to retain staff? Is it hard to get staff now? Yeah, it is. We have people, one of them here for four years, the other one here for two years. A min assistant that we need, a sustainability officer that we need that has four years experience, the other one has two. Do you want to let them walk? So you make them permanent. That's not a big ask. It's 19000 and some dollars. I don't really consider that cherry picking. I call it common sense. So that's why I added that to the resolution. Anyway, resolution on the floor? Questions on the floor. Okay. So all those, no, all those in favor? The motion is to go with what he amended, two positions to make them permanent. You asked to take away the uh, the uh, solicitor. Right. That's what's on the floor. And then stick with the rest of it. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. So all all those so in favor. Uh, <laughs> Just so I know, because we get in we get into this situation, we rush through. No, we're not rushing. Not Okay, I no. want to make sure that we understand we know exactly what we're, we're voting for. We're making two temporary or uh, two positions going to permit, uh, permanent in environment sustainability, and you're dropping the city solicitor. That's the motion on the floor. That right is now. the amendment on the floor. Okay. All, all the all those in favor of doing that. I'm in okay, so we have. Councillors Beck, McKinnon, uh, Ramsey, McAleer, Bernard, and the deputy. All those against. Okay, so it's 6 3 to go with the amendment. That's it. So the, everything is where it is. You got two, and you don't get the solicitor. No, six. There are nine. Matard voted against it. Ron and Tweel. No, we're all right. What what else do you want to discuss? We we we're done. Yeah, that's that's it. Now, just just before we go, hold on. Uh, just want to keep you there, Councillor. Do you want to move a, a motion to adjourn there, Councillor Duran? Yeah. Councillor Trill, do you want to second it? What's that? Second it? Second what? The cherry picking? No, adjournment. Adjourn. Yes, Thank you. Time.